Good evening, America, and all the other lesser nations. It's your boy Donnie, former president of the United States, and really the best president, quite frankly. I'm here tonight to tell you not to be like China and instead donate to the OCA podcast. But don't just take it from me, the greatest and most loved president of all time. Listen to these other satisfied customers. I think of the host of the OCA podcast as my five and a half additional children. And like a good American father, I support them by donating to their only fans. If only I had started donating earlier, Uncle Ben might still be alive. I've never met my real dad, but that's okay. Because after donating all my savings, the host agreed to be my new dads. I want the change out of his coin purse who donate to the podcast. No, not my coins! Yes, your coins. It's time to do, 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 do. Donate to the Patreon! Alright! The OCA podcast needs my money more than my sister Serenity! Donate today! Welcome back! To the OCA podcast, I am your host, the Anime Collector. Joining me tonight, the Rape Squad has assembled. It's me, Reef Two Seven Five Three. Awesome! <laughs> 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 nice, you were a hentai and protector of cringe, Greenland gelato. <laughs> Footnum: Our resident uh, Canadian he... for our Bill C. What was it? <laughs> C11? C11. <laughs> yes, <laughs> correct. Um, actually, you said Reese Squad, YouTube. That's what he said. Don't demonetize us. Mm. And then we have whoever's next. Ram 11? Oh. Fail. <laughs> yeah, our, second, our secondary um, affirmative action hire. Woohoo, I'm here for a happy I'm Victoria Day. <laughs> And King style <laughs> filling in for Lance. All right. So um, let me uh, jump right in here. If you guys would like to support the OCA podcast, as we are in this difficult time where our father has been let go from Fox News, for fuck's sake, why will this stream end? <laughs> there is the OCA podcast Patreon, where you can donate monthly. There is also the anime collector patreon and previously i have not been really eager to grow this that is changing i am now working on videos again and by i am working on videos again i mean i'm paying Fudnam to do a bunch of legwork so if you would like to help fund Fudnam's fund this is how you do it <laughs> also help the anime collector pay after you down to pay reach yeah <laughs> Yes, it comes full circle. It's a multi-level marketing scheme. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm at the bottom of the pyramid, so please. Damn, son. <laughs> Help me funnel that money all the way back up to re-stuff owners. <laughs> all right, then there's also, uh, there's also our um, support page, which has additional ways you can support us, such as our affiliate codes on Right Stuff, Humble Bundle. You could use our affiliate for StreamYard and TubeBuddy. That's basically it. All right. Now let's jump right in here. So shortly after last podcast where we discussed uh, numerous things, there was an article that came out on medium.com, immediate red flag, titled anime reviewer Mars Girl accused of sexually assaulting underage boy at a wild party in L.A. Shocking details. From CNN Anime. Now, I don't know how many of you had to look past the first ten percent of the uh, <laughs> of the image here before obviously noting, hmm, CNN Anime on Medium.com. Why wouldn't they just post it to their own website? And also the fact that they're in the URL, Medium.com/slash. The Psycho Arsenal. That sounds like CNN branding, right? So pretty obvious fake uh, yeah. fake article. Good also, troll. Also, there is no such thing as CNN anime. Yeah. They don't give a shit about anime. Right? <laughs> so uh, They pretty... have the biggest weebs over there. Don't you <laughs> forget it, okay? So, yeah, it's. Uh, I don't even think we need to address it. The article's been taken down. 
Um, so I just, I don't know. I think, uh, I thought it was funny when it happened, but it's been so long now that I don't even know if we have to cover it. However, uh, I will say that Mars Girl has been very triggered over the existence of the article. Obviously, it's been taken down, so she's re remained uh, her normal, unpleasant self since then. But um, she really went out of her way to come to come after Squally for posting the screenshot with this caption. Can someone verify if this is cap? Which for you non Gen Zers means fake. <laughs> so asking if, if something is real gets you, everybody to uh, come at you with knives to your throat. But Mar but Mars Girl's attempts to just outright say, oh, this happened, fix this, fix that. I don't know. It just seems kind of shitty. Uh, so what she's done since the uh, original post here came out uh, has been just an attempt at poisoning the well between Vic and his closest supporters, including Squally. You guys remember um, in uh, his de his deposition that the leader of his fan club, he talked about Melissa Flutie. That's who Squally is. Um, that's like his closest confidant in terms of his liaison between him and the fans. So Mars Girl attempted to... Um, Basically, it's like, oh, Squally needs to be fired, and Vic, this is disgusting. You sick your fans on me, you know, all that kind of shit. So anyway, long story short, that's where that went. Now, there was another um, incident that we also covered, which was this petition from last podcast where Mars Girl uh, had, uh, what was her name, Farah, whatever, uh, had created a... Um, a change.org petition to stop four years of target harassment for Mars girl. Uh, well, it's got 102 signatures. Uh, more, the more interesting one we covered last podcast was, Oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Fucker. Did they delete it? No, it's just a no. DNS address has been acting up from, uh, archive. Let's see. Hold on. Anyway, so it was <laughs> the uh, the petition that we had of um, of JT loves Code Lyoko, right? And since then, <laughs> it has. God damn it! Click on the wrong one again. I inverted them. Hold on. As I was saying, dead air. Holy shit. Okay. As <laughs> he was saying, nothing. <laughs> yes, bada bing. Did not bing. found. This petition is not available. Either the URL is incorrect, it violated our community guidelines, or the starter. Removed it. I didn't remove it. <laughs> I can speak on behalf of anonymous user. <laughs> that I didn't remove it. <laughs> now, in the fallout of the last podcast, JT, I, I just want to point out again, real quick, that Kick Mars Girl, this petition is still up. <laughs> And JT's petition is not still up, indicating, as as you put it, it looks like Mars Girl can take a joke better than JT, who said, I found it funny, right? So I said, good, we'll put it back up. Now, I'd just like to point out, uh, in an indication that he definitely was not triggered at all, in the comments, you guys remember last podcast, I shared the URL. Damn it. I shared the URL of. This is a fucking disaster. <laughs> Technical <laughs> difficulties brought to you by. I shared the URL to every destination, right? So it went to Twitter, to Facebook, right? 
for where we were streaming. And here is the comment. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, interestingly, because you are so not triggered, somebody had to come. I don't even know if you can see it. Do you see it? Am I screen sharing the way where it shows? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A certain someone felt the need to make sure we knew how not triggered he was <laughs> by finding you the just post. said I can take a joke. <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad to hear of your thick skin uh, because we have restored. So change.org wouldn't let me put it back up because it had already removed once. Fortunately, our affiliates over at cringe.org were more than willing to let us put it back up. So I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and post it here to every destination again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yay. I invite everyone to come to come sign the petition. <laughs> so it's pretty simple. First, I'd like to address uh, another incident that occurred because things have gotten very weird in the tiny penis club. <laughs> uh <laughs> You don't say. <laughs> Angelo has been role playing, takes off belt, JT, bend over, bend over now, JT, do not defy me, hits JT. Literal real violence, trigger warning. Mm. JT replies. <laughs> and just like that, shit. no more beatings. Yeah, you want to abuse me, I'm going to BDSM mode. I'm going to tell Mars, you want her to be your dominatrix. Do it. I dare you. Well, when you fill out, oh, it's good. We're already getting some, <laughs> some new ones. You're going to put in your first name, your last name. If you don't want your first name and the first initial of your last name, you can put in your display name. For example, you know, the one you use on YouTube or whatever. You can send a message to JT. And what's really great about this petition is that it's actually two petitions in one. So if you select to display your name and comment on the petition, you are granted access to the secondary petition. Should Mars Girl become JT's dominatrix? Yes. <laughs> and then you can sign the petition. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, so let's see Ooh. if we can outdo Mars Girl's petition. I I invite everybody. <laughs> I invite everybody to share, and also thank you for this. The great JT of the Discord service here, Harder Daddy. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so I invite everybody to go and sign the petition. It was not a lot of effort at all. It didn't take us, you know, days upon days of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of effort to mock up the change.org website. All right. I am disappointed at how long it's taking you individuals to sign this petition. <laughs> I, <have> to get... <laughs> I couldn't I gag you, you if I wanted. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> you talk with your fingertips. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so there you go. I thought that would be fun for you guys. Make sure you share it. Uh, we definitely need uh, I stand with Vic and kick Vic to come together to find new material slash a dominatrix for JT. So uh, in other news, I do have this. And apparently I did not include the tweet I was going to put in here, but whatever. So starting things off, disliked voice actress Amy Smith issues an apology after English industry colleagues attack her for accepting Pardon, for accepting the role of a non-white character. Now, I don't want to pull in a Dexter's dad scenario here, but uh, <laughs> do you think this character looks black or non-white? Not Is too there... terribly. Not I mean, really. At, no, it doesn't. At, at best, anything, it's like she white like she adjacent. A, it looked like she could have had a, a little tan, you know, spray tan slightly or gone in the sun a tiny bit. But other than like, that, no. 
it's so nondescript, not white, but is white, but kind of like it's so in that realm that it's it sort of feels like tan. It, it it just feels yes, it feels as though you could you could scrutinize Amy Lee to this or pardon Amy Smith to the same degree as the character here, right? So in the English voice acting industry, there has been a growing demand from activists for authentic casting or race-based casting in animation, particularly in regards to black characters being portrayed by similarly skinned actors. And in pursuit of this goal, such viewers often take to attacking any white voice actor who is cast in a role any darker than actual snow, as they believe them to be stealing a given role from a minority demographic. Honestly, the thing that about this that I find so ridiculous is that <laughs> we actually end up having like if we hold everybody to this standard, then you actually get less roles in as minority voice actors, right? Okay, Rona Jaw says she's from Australia. Yeah, and they're tan as fuck down there. <laughs> I think I think people are arguing the hairstyle perhaps is like dreads and I don't know. I'm not quite sure. But I don't think that's dreads. I think it's more like any hairstyle that anybody who's into hairstyles would take. Well, I think because they got like the caps on the end kind of thing, you know, and then the big poof balls could be like it's, it's yeah. the interpretation. Of course. I don't agree with it, but whatever. Um, so anyway, they say, uh, and in pursuit of this goal, such viewers often take to attacking any white voice actor who is cast in a role any darker than actual snow as they believe them to be stealing the given role from minority demographics. The latest victim of this race-based obsession was English language voice actress Amy Smith, perhaps best known as the voice of Freedom Planet 2's Mila Bassett. Uh, Smith came under fire after publicly announcing that she had been cast in the Chinese gotcha game Dislight as both the Japanese esper Yu Hime and the Egyptian esper Ain. Okay, so she's Egyptian. That's where we're going with here. So uh, Do we Egypt, have any Egyptian, you know. That part in Northern Africa that is as close as could be to Europe, right? Like, <laughs> right, yeah, that has multiple different, like, where it was clearly stated several times over the last several weeks that Cleopatra was white, was green, right? Yes, well, I mean, Cleopatra is a little different, a little different than this Esper, uh, but anyway, so, um. She said, I'm so excited to share that I voiced both Izanami and Ayn. Uh, in the latest Dislight Sea of Sorrow event, she announced on May 2nd, so honored to have now voiced five espers in Dislight. Wow! Similar to Netflix's Queen Cleopatra, should have just shut your fucking whore mouth. <laughs> Ronan Ja says, uh, aren't we talking about Phil Lamar, a black actor playing a Japanese hero known as Samurai Jack? Dude, Phil Lamar plays Vamp in Metal Gear Solid. I mean, he's fucking half the world. He played like, Aquaman yeah. in one of the video games in Justice. Too. Phil Lamar is fucking legit. And you know why he can do that? Because he has range. Because he didn't jump into the booth and say, I only do black voice, black voices and I and I uh, will take them from any white people who wanted them. You know, like that's not his M.O. His MO is to just actually be a good worker and get cast in more things outside of his race because nobody actually fucking cares about the color of your skin if your voice fits the character. Uh, Luigi the Metal 64 says, it would have been better to have brown skin voice actors voice as beige skin characters. Easy as that. Voices and skins are never related. If anything, the that Ein chick, you know who should be offended? Minnie Mouse. <laughs> because look at look at the ear hair thing, mm -hmm. you know? Totally resembling. She's just gotta die. American her voice blue. actors for Chinese and Japanese properties. Oh uh, we're gonna have to come back to a previous topic in just a moment. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Similar to Netflix's Queen Cleopatra, thanks to her Egyptian ethnicity, many activists have taken to claiming that not only is Ayn a black character, but that Smith is a racist for having taken the role. However, rather than the typical mob of terminally online social media users, though they were present in the discourse as well, Smith received the most flack from other, um, from several of her industry colleagues. So from other voice actors, what I was going to say. Uh, amongst the industry critics included Atlas talent voice actor um, Joshua David, I'm sorry, Atlas English voice actor rep Joshua David King, who, in, who inquired if Smith was given Ayn's character art, that the white voice actress knew she was auditioning for a black character. Okay. I would just like to point out, she is being canceled for voicing the Egyptian character, even though in her announcement, she has announced that she was voicing the Japanese character and the Egyptian character. Why is she only being raked over the coals for the Egyptian character? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fucked up. Like, if you ask me, that's even more racist mm -hmm. <laughs> by the uh, the people calling her out. <clears throat> Did you see the character art before booking? Question Genshin Impact voice actor Joshua David King. This is very clearly a black character, so I thought I'd ask. Likewise, industry audio engineer Eliana Zebro whose credits include serving as the dialogue editor for such video games as a monster hunter rise sunbreak and strangers in paradise, final fantasy origin pressed Smith quote, come on, or came on Twitter and saw this in my for you. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is I a person of color quote, looking over at Ayn's announcement on dislikes Twitter. There seems to be, there seems, sorry, there seems to folks, there seems two folks happy about. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess seems folks aren't too happy about Ayn being... Wait. There seems to be folks happy about Ayn being another great uh, person of color character in the game. She passively aggressively at it. So I'm quite confused. That's a she? Hmm. Okay. Quote, warning to VAs. Don't do this. It will never be worth the booking, wrote Michelle Rojas, the voice of Shion in that time I got reincarnated as a slime. This casting director didn't care, but many do, and it doesn't go unnoticed. We have to trust in our actors, and this is a red flag. Replying to Rojas, industry casting director Samantha Morrison not only voiced her agreement, but also chastised her for not rejecting the role the moment she saw that Ayn had darker skin than herself. I like the idea that voice actors will start going to tanning booths and wearing spray tans and stuff <laughs> to darken their skin so that like they're literally just everybody in the industry is walking around in blackface just to play the roles right? You're not white enough to play this role now. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Well, a certain commander in chief thinks that way too. If you don't vote for me, you're not black you enough. Uh, not only voice your agreement, Chas has your, okay. Uh, quote, even assuming there was no reference art in the original audition. As soon as the VA saw the character, they should have said, no, I don't feel comfortable voicing a person of, of color. Um, that's it. This whole do whatever it takes to make it mentality is going to kill careers before they even start. You mean you're going to kill their careers yeah. before they even start. What, what, if they just... said, what, if, what if they said, no, I'm not going to voice that, that character. I'm not going to degrade myself to that level. <laughs> what should they send that? In the wake of this backlash, Smith returned to her Twitter account the day after her initial announcement to apologize for taking the role. Quote, I wish I had a better excuse, but I don't. The voice actress began, quote, I fucked up. But if I can sincerely wish for one thing, I hope it can be seen as not a malicious screw up, 
but uh, I make mistakes and can be fucking dense sometimes, kind of screw up. <laughs> Please don't crucify me. <laughs> Why should she even apologize? This is so stupid. Right? It's like, oh, no. I'm sorry no, that I took this character. Done. Yep, yeah, they make up the rules as they go. This is ridiculous. What oh, hurts God. is I really do try my best to do the right thing when it comes to authentic casting. It's something I believe in. So to have this oversight in my auditions is an incredibly hard thing to swallow. I had thought a process behind what I was seeing in the cat in the wait, hold on. I had a thought process. Sorry. I had a thought process behind what I was seeing in the audition casting call, but it was clearly wrong. I'm really sorry. So here's what I want to know. How far along were they in, in the production? So I imagine not too much, but if, if they were far enough along, if I was the casting director, I'd be fucking livid. I'd be remember, so fucking pissed. Remember like, when people if, if she recorded oh, any yeah. lines. Whatsoever. No, because they got to pay a new actor. Even if yeah. she returns the money, they still had to pay the you know engineers and whatnot to record it. So they now yeah. have to double the amount I'd they so allocated. Pissed. I'd drag in as many of these fucking Twitter people, mm -hmm. these these voice actors from Twitter as I could find, and be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, Look, all I can say insane? is AI voice acting cannot come soon enough. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that's gonna be the the ultimate downfall slash ultimate solution for some of these people for overreacting. It's like, it's like it's gonna be the ultimate sacrifice. Look, I know you're a person of color and all, but you don't you don't quite fit the character because you're not also imaginary. That's why we're going with this artificial intelligence because it's made up. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> So this has made me realize I need to be more vigilant with the choice of rather uh, with the choice of rather to submit or not to submit with certain auditions moving forward. Sometimes the answer is as clear as day and it's an easy yes or no. Whereas with some other auditions, I'll admit on a personal level, I found it difficult to navigate as voice actors. I completely recognize there's an owner. There's an ownership on us to make the right judgment calls. And I just need to, I just need to refine mine just much more. She ult I'd love to hear her say that because I have no idea what that phraseology means. Uh, so then she goes to say, I'm really sorry to those I've let down and for not supporting my fellow voice actors as much as I could be. I promise to be better. The, the, real, the real culprit here is the fact that this is a Chinese gotcha game and yeah. the Chinese hate black people. Oh yeah. Just look just look at the Star Wars posters <laughs> with Finn yeah. or, shrunk or, or, down or to the, the size Panther. of a pixel, right? Or the Black Panther mm -hmm. poster, right? They cover Chichala's face. Even though I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm probably in the minority. I think the mask cover for him looks cooler than the one we got outside. Oh really? Like the, you know the official one? No, because you remember Spider-Man? They have the mask, like Batman wears the mask in the, in the posters. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why. Why they Marvel show him with the said, mask off. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, no, so the he's... reason, the reason is because unlike you, most people need to see the signal that shows them this is a movie you're supposed to uh, beat off to relentlessly. Right. <laughs> and, and suck <laughs> off uh, all the actors on Twitter. Uh, and pay a thousand times, buy buy out all the the movie theater seats, and don't don't go kind of like that's what it signifies to them. See, yeah, you just wanted to be right? entertained. You forgot that movies aren't about entertainment anymore. They're about shoving your dick in the right ideology. <laughs> yeah. So three days later, Smith would return to the topic to reiterate how, quote, I believe in more representative casting. I recognize I made a poor judgment call. I'm deeply sorry to those I've let down, and I'm still learning. Yeah, in you my made heart, the judgment call, not the casting director, not the fucking person who was like, yeah, you did great. Oh, no, Let's I, sign I willingly off on said, fuck my paycheck. I don't need this. I could work at McDonald's tomorrow. You'd be really day. funny. I, I just, it would just be so funny if, if one of these days we're going to read one of these and let's go three days later, Smith would return to the topic with the simple statement race war now. Right? Like just <laughs> <laughs> finding she's destitute <laughs> as, as she's been blacklisted from the industry. <laughs> she'd turn around and say, okay, 
Give me some English-speaking Egyptian voice actors. I'm tagging out famed black voice actor for her white character role. (laughs) I am calling on my fellow voice actors no longer to voice Japanese character. Yeah. (laughs) We must be better. (laughs) Bye-bye Dragon Ball and Naruto and all the Gundam series. Well, Dragon Ball, the characters are Saiyans. So... We need to get be, Saiyans yeah, but the human and characters, Namekians the and human characters. Yeah. I don't know because Dragon Ball doesn't actually take place on on a planet Earth that has the same countries and whatnot. So you could probably get. I mean, yeah, the skin color thing you're still are. you're still fucked on. You know, like clearly there are some characters that are that are supposed to be Asian. You know, like General Pai or or whatever his name is. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but uh, in my heart, yeah. I know all four things to be true simultaneously, and none negate the others. That's the. Uh, I'm still learning. I'm deeply sorry. I recognize I made a poor judgment call. Okay. There is no girl. They've got her like hog tied and like she's licking the boots of her fucking. Right. There is no perfect set of words, but I know that my values, I I know that my values that have always been there will strengthen and will work to put so much more good back into the industry. Thank you to those who took the time to approach this issue with kindness and to my peers <laughs> who have checked in X. What does that mean? Yeah, but I but I picture what is she has a bag over her head. I picture she has a bag overhead with a group of people waterboarding and say, You better write this now. Yeah, okay. You're right. Types. Oh, maybe she means I'm checked sorry. in and then X is like kisses. I don't know. But yeah, it's like <laughs> Whew, she's uh she's been destroyed royally. So uh that's a shame. Any thoughts uh, other than the ones we've already given? Yeah, uh bullied, uh not fun. I can't believe she chickened out. I can't believe that the again the director didn't say jack shit. I would have been like, no, you're you're coming in on Monday. Uh, we've already like recorded half your lines. Like, no, you're not gonna yeah. fucking wouldn't it I be say funny? don't apologize. Wouldn't it be funny if she turned out to be Egyptian? Right. Egyptians are much lighter than you like think in your head, you know, kind of thing because of mm. uh, Hollywood propaganda of, you know, what they portrayed Egyptians as once upon a time. Um, but anyway, so that's enough of that. I do want to. Uh, I do want to return. Oh, did they? To see. They? Yep. They? Let's get to 69, everyone. Also, mm. JT loves Code Lyoko. Did you actually sign this petition? He loves the internet. I signed it. I'm glad. Because now, if you had Scroll read down. the terms of service. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Oh, go back. Scroll comment? down and see his comment. Oh, that's right. Let me uh, pull that back up. Harder, Daddy. Well, if you insist. <laughs> In section two, three of the uh, OCA podcast slash cringe.org terms of service, by accessing and interacting with cringe.org, you agree to conduct yourself responsibly, appreciating the singularity of our platform. By signing a petition, you grant us the unrestricted right to use your likeness, name, voice, comments, and or appearance as such may be embodied in any pictures, photos, video recordings, audio tapes, digital images, and the like taken or made on behalf of cringe.org, including those posted to cringe.org affiliates, such as, but not limited to, content shared to Discord, Facebook, etc. You agree that cringe.org has complete ownership of such material and can be and can use said material for any purpose consistent with cringe.org's mission to monetize the mentally deficient. These uses include but are not limited to videos, publications, advertisements, news releases, websites, merchandise, and any promotional or educational materials. So thank you for signing it. I do appreciate Damn, that, JT. <laughs> uh, and I would also like to promote our recent merch. You can now buy soy wax candles for cringe.org. You can buy. You can buy cringe.org boxer briefs. 
manage her expectations up front by making sure she knows that your penis is (laughs) cringe.org. So there you go. That's my sales. I believe they refer to the, (laughs) they refer to the dick cringing up and shriveling. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, coming soon, do we have, uh, JT no, Mars no. Girl. <laughs> I think that merch you can buy that right, body pillow. Right there. Yes, I did this, sign. This is video video evidence. He says he did sign it. Well, right soon you will be allowed to buy your own face on a pillowcase. You, it'll be <laughs> on a it'll be a regular pillow. pillowcase. So on on one side it's your face like this. And on the other side, it's the sexy mode. I, I'm sure you know how pillow, how uh, body pillows work. <laughs> <laughs> Can uh, we like Photoshop his eyes uh, in, to make it look like they're rolling into the back of his head like an Agaho face? Or, or do with the yellow eyes, remember, from Revenge of the Sith? I mean, we've Ooh, got the rights to do Anakin. whatever we want. He signed him away. <laughs> 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 We had some pretty good ideas for the reflections of his lenses, but we didn't get them. Okay. <laughs> okay, just click it. I'll stop. <laughs> okay. So there you go. Uh, Your Honor, there yeah, it is. is <laughs> I need self promo. I need self promo. <laughs> Buddy, you can share this petition with anybody you want. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got it. We Especially got it. Mars Girl. <laughs> Especially Mars Girl. That might be the, the way you break Have the you ice. wanted to kick me? <laughs> <laughs> what Mars Girl, baby, what do I have to do to get you to lay those boots on me? Kick JT. <laughs> right. And then the background. Kick playing. me harder, mommy. Whip it. Whip it. <laughs> All right. So in further news here. Um Kyoto Animation Arson Suspect. Thank you. I'll do it. Thanks. Kyoto Animation Arson Suspect will have the verdict handed down on January 25th, 2024. A swift trial for that bastard. What's it been? Oh, that's right. Since, was it July 2019? Yeah. This fucker is really holding on. So much for that conviction rate. He's still a suspect. So despite reports. Is he anonymous? No, his name is Shinji Aoba. Okay, good. Because some cases in Japan, they do have it anonymous. No, hilariously though, when when we wanted to uh, when we wanted to start covering this, Reese of all people said, "Let's not say his name. Let's not give him the publicity on our platform." I'm like, "You got it, Virtue Signaler. Let's do it." And then we did that. And then the first podcast that reese did without me because i had i had peak season at work he says the guy's name <laughs> like, <I'm not> <laughs> <laughs> what an ultimate fail right there yeah top 10 anime betrayals <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um so despite reports i always uh, use the heat of the moment i'm sorry <laughs> the heat how in how uh was. reese was in you. heat okay. people died in that oh, fire man. reese <laughs> Oh, oh, geez. Despite, re- <laughs> despite reports yeah, that heat like a like a female cat. <laughs> despite reports that the trial of suspected Kyoto animation arsonist Shinjo Aoba um, will be concluded this year. Today, the Kyoto District Court announced that the verdict will be delivered on January fifth, twenty twenty four, ending the trial that has been ongoing since the attack in July twenty nineteen. It has not been going on since July twenty nineteen. First he was in the freaking hospital in the emergency room where they grafted new skin and he became um uh like uh infatuated with the nurse that was caring for him <laughs> and all that. Like he's had quite the journey. Uh along the verdict date Uh, Sorry, along with the verdict date, the court revealed that Alba will face court for the first time on September 5th after going through two rounds of psych evaluations to see if to see if he was fit to stand trial since being arrested in May 2020. One uh, one from the prosecutor side and another from the defense, with both concluding that the trial can continue. 
Alba was caught at the scene with heavy burns all over his body and has been charred. Uh, charred has been charged. With <laughs> well, he has. Uncharted. Yeah, yeah, he's char yeah, charged. Well well done. Done. <laughs> he was charged. Well now. He was charged with murder, attempted murder, arson, breaking and entering, and violation, violating the firearms and sword control law. I don't see the word firebombs in that <laughs> by the Kyoto District Police uh, Prosecutor's Office. Public public prosecutor's office. All right, we already know the rest of the stuff. So moving on. So um, any thoughts on that? I, I'm trying to slow down our pace. I mean, they want this guy in prison, rightfully so, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't give a shit if he uh, has loose screws or not. They're like, if he's a fucking alive, he could go to jail. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's all she wrote. That's it. I don't think Reese caught enough heat for that comment he made. Are we going to roast him? Which no, I, I was just let's using go, heat let's, again. Let's, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's burn this to the ground. I'm just watching some recordings of nothing in particular. <laughs> ah. Someone, someone doesn't know what it means to sign away the rights to your likeness, apparently. <laughs> Sorry, you already signed the thing. Yep. All right. How about this? How about how about this? I will give you two dollars to your PayPal for everything that we sell with your face on it. That will be like fifty percent of the merch uh, sale. Oh boy! How's that? I am I am a shrewd businessman, but I can be negotiated I, with. <laughs> I thought you you meant two dollars as an upfront fee, and that's all you get. You you need to compensation. What's compensation? Hmm. Okay, so uh, it just seems it just seems like now might be a good time to bring up the fact that I got a recording of you reporting. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my comment was reported. I dare you, I suppose. Are you fucking serious? You start over, bitch. <laughs> I'm getting cucked so hard on these burns right now. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, open with the, the fucking guy on. I can hear it, but it's not showing. What the hell? Don't worry, I got it. I am always prepared. <laughs> but there's a will, there's a way. I just want to say, although there's been many hiccups on this epic burn, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> <laughs> Despite I would just like, really for slow. your viewing pleasure, I would just like to showcase <laughs> that I can confirm JT has tried to report for a policy <laughs> violation. Oh, boy. That's unbelievable. It's not showing on this screen, but if I drag it over here. Oh, you know why? Because I think it's here. <laughs> there it is. Do you see it now? Do you see it now? Yes, we see it now. So, report abuse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Come on, select your food and I for <laughs> <laughs> Give us that perfidy account name. <laughs> All right. Yeah, don't forget to do the captcha. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, but given your prior statements on Discord, we've determined that your your proportion of this petition was made in error and we have canceled it. <laughs> 
so there you go. Everybody else made it to completion on that burn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was edged a little bit. I, took a while, but yeah. I need to change my pants. <laughs> gonna save that one and incorporate it down my leg <laughs> <laughs> all right you're a great sport bro you already signed i'm sorry man yeah <laughs> you signed dude <laughs> you, you know you get nothing. Fifty thousand when you're not even gonna we're not even gonna sell that much product right i'd yeah, also like, like to like point that. out the level of not triggered you are <laughs> Unless Donald Trump comes in and says, I'll pay $50,000 for everything. That eight months ago, that happen. when B fan, B, pardon, BF fan 221 uh, came in and said, The clown arrives at 13814. What's the matter, JT? Can't handle the thunder and resort to deep fence sitting outside of kickback echo chambers? <laughs> A whole month later, I don't care. Come on, man. End the act. It's all right. We're all <laughs> friends here. We know how we know how easily triggered you are, uh, and we will now uh, commence the uh, petition signing and all that. Just remember, everyone, you are also bound by the terms. Of service. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyway, back to back to the actual podcast. Okay, so Arts Workers Japan raises concerns that voice actors will lose their jobs to AI. The association sent a written request to the Agency of, uh, for Cultural Affairs. So. Interesting that Japan knows their end is is near more than uh, the English VAs, right? Yeah. Also, is this the voice of Goku? <laughs> Nozawa? Masako Nozawa? Yeah, th- yeah Masako Nozawa, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so they said, um, Arts Workers Japan, an association of freelance voice actors and musicians, held a press conference in Tokyo on May 8th to convey their concerns that the development of AI could take away the art of expression and that many people in the industry could lose their jobs. The association sent a written request to the Agency for Cultural Affairs and other agencies requesting the establishment of laws to strengthen efforts to protect rights on the same day as the press conference. <laughs> that is rich. <Wow. laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. Let's see. So um, at the press conference, the association pointed out that it's highly likely the AI will create animation, films, and music without demonstrations. Uh, by voice actors or actors, and that the jobs of the staff involved in their production will be lost. For example, AI announcers are increasingly replacing human announcers to read the news on Japanese news programs. Well, I mean, like, do you really need somebody to read the, the teleprompter when you're showing B-roll the whole time? Uh, be funny. It's uh, what's her name? Um, oh, fuck. The green-haired Vocaloid girl. Why am I blanking on her name? Miku? Hatsune Miku. 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 <laughs> I was like, Megumi? That's not right. What the fuck? <laughs> like, all right. Anyway. So, oh, because I was seeing this. Megumi Morisaki. Uh, the, the association's president and an actor argued, quote, advances in AI will further destabilize the way we work. She stressed the need for new provisions for rights related to artists and for legislation, allowing performers and others to seek appropriate compensation when AI creates a work based on their work. I mean, yeah, I mean, if, if somebody creates an AI based on your voice, your likeness, unless you signed the petition, uh, you should have legal (laughs) recourse, you know, (laughs) to get some compensation out off of them using your voice, except Mm -hmm. for Donald Trump, Tucker Carlson, um, Yu-Gi-Oh guy, Bench Android Piro. 13 guy, Ash, 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 Ash. <laughs> and uh, uh, Toby McGuire, <laughs> and uh, whoever voiced Ash Ketchum <laughs> for that. Veronica group. Taylor. Those Veronica specific Taylor, Dan people Green, Taylor. are uh, Joey Wheeler. Are, they have probably signed the petition, so therefore, <laughs> <laughs> we are, <laughs> the rules are the rules. We, we, we don't make it up, yeah. right? We don't code the rules into a cryptic website. <laughs> That's how they just are what they are. (laughs) 
The association was established in 2021 and has about 52,000 members, including voice actors, artists, actors, and stage staff. According to its website, Artworks Japan aims to create an environment where people working in arts and entertainment can receive social security, maintain their physical and mental health, receive receive fair rewards, and continue to work safely in the fields of art and entertainment. Imagine the goal. I'll just I'll just make it easy for you. Just say no. <laughs> Be better than the machines, and uh, we'll talk. <laughs> Nobody wishes Osamu Tezuka to say he supports the Japanese emperor being killed created by AI. Okay. <laughs> I am, not, you've stumped me. <laughs> All right. Um, anyway, any thoughts? Um, this is obviously the direction right. things are going. Am I wrong? Yeah. Um, you know, just the usual thoughts. We had them last uh, couple articles ago. It's like, I mean, this is happening. Mm -hmm. Whether they want to believe it or not, you know. So. Yeah, it seems to the me. The Americans, not the Japanese, because they obviously know what's coming. The Americans are just. It seems to me. The arguing what... among themselves. Historically. So I just want to point out that I called this. All right. We talked about this years ago on the podcast when it came to the AI coloring anime. And I was just basically saying like, get fucking ready. You know, it's going to hit you like you blink and you're gone in terms of your, your uh, you know, work duties. You know, it's going to, it's going to wipe them out. You know, I think that people right now are panicking really late in the game because they didn't understand the exponential growth and development of this technology that mm -hmm. you've already, it's gone. Like your career is basically gone. 99% of people are not going to be able to compete with the, the, the you know, version of their career a year into the AI integration. Yeah. You know what I mean? What I would suggest, it's just not going to happen. Work, but like the I only way. Know. The only way that work is you work super cheap, like slave labor, or um, you're already a legacy type of person that's been mm -hmm. doing it for yeah. over 20 or 30 years. Yes. That's the only so, that's, way. That's the thing is that something that I think about a lot is the concept of how new of an invention TV actually is. You know what I mean? Like just the, the idea that the, the world we currently live in that contains um, IP, entertainment, stuff stuff like the, they build entire franchises off of is very new in, in the way that it manifests today, right? Yes, there used to be radio before, before TV came out. Yes, before that, there were books. Before that, it was all spoken word, like the, the Gutenberg yeah. um, or, stone, or stone tablets as scrolls. Right. Yeah. So so the form of 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 storytelling, storytelling, you know, in terms of how it is today and how it's a commodity today that people be become trained in crafting stories <clears throat> out of thin air and putting them, you know, to a script that becomes a TV show or even a commercial or something, you know, is super new. And historically speaking, everything that we look at today as normal, super what was superseded by something else that it outright replaced. Even just in your lifetime, cable TV has been suspended for, you know, YouTube streaming, different types of content that previously weren't, the norm you know what i mean before that um video killed the radio star so to speak right uh and so i look at this and now, i think now it's internet killed the tv star right and and so i look at this and i think ai kills the artist right it's it's gonna happen and eventually mm -hmm. it will get to the point where like and this is this is kind of the incredible thing i think about human evolution Right. In the sense that we've obtained a new level in our, you know, sort of evolution where we're doing it technologically instead of biologically to, to a degree. 
right? And that in order to accelerate it, because something I've been thinking about is how from a mental standpoint, people are far more sophisticated in their ability to comprehend, the average person is, right? The, the ability to comprehend complex ideas is significantly better today than it was 100 years ago. In fact, they say that our ability in modern time to comprehend what if scenarios or just hypothetical scenarios has actually been the thing that makes the average IQ higher than it was 100 years ago. So because we've gotten to a post-scarcity almost level of living where for the vast majority of people, food is accessible, right? Housing is accessible. It might not be easy to afford, but it is accessible, right? And work is not 24 hours a day. It's, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week, you know, the system has been built around that. It creates a world in which you are not living every second of your life just simply trying to survive, right? Which gives way to the ability to consume stories, read books, watch TV, you know, watch copious amounts of internet porn, right? <laughs> Whatever you're going to spend your time doing. And that this has put us into a, into a realm where if you watch an old movie, like especially black and white movies, when they were first figuring out the medium, a lot of them are laughably ridiculous in terms of the scenarios they're trying to portray as as real that they're making up, right? Um, and it's like when uh, when a plot point, it's kind of we were talking about last podcast with Vivi. There is that that quote, Fudnam, that you brought up about how um, I figured out that the consciousness could be converted to text. Uh, and then it was just a matter of sending it back in time. It's like the hard part of that thing is the part you acted like, oh uh, yeah, you just start with a circle, add a little shading and you're done. And then, you know, kind of, <laughs> right. So, but people's ability to fathom and comprehend complexity has increased greatly. Right. Maybe I say that people's ability to do that. Oh, I guess my dog just bit my daughter in the face. That's great. Let me text my wife and ask her if I need to step out for a minute. Um, anyway, but the, uh, the the point is that our... Hold on. <clears throat> so the point... <laughs> Sorry, I. Uh, <laughs> I, I you sure was so funny with the class. Yes. Even I did not foresee this one. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, wonderful! Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Do you see on StreamYard in the top left corner? We got a, a, a laugh emoji. We got uh -huh. a laugh emoji on this podcast. From one Joseph to <laughs> Oh, this is the most fun I've had on the podcast. <laughs> this is so fun. And he's crying on Discord about, I want, uh, I want the money. No, you signed yourself away. <laughs> Bold of you to assume we'll make any. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyway, so um I think my wife just asked me. I want to share the profits. No, you should have read the terms of service before signing bra. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Don't worry, we'll talk, JT. Don't worry. <laughs> We're truly right, on so the anyway. same level you are. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, um oh did I screen share that just now? I I, I was on No, the you wrong. weren't screen sharing anything. Oh, fucker. God damn it. I'm an idiot. We're still looking at the uh Arch okay. workers in Japan. I'm so okay. So this is what I was trying to share before, but it, I was on a different window. Uh, JT reacted. Why did my comment with the? Uh, did you report my comment? 
Did you report my comment? <laughs> I like how you say it like Russell Crowe. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Are you not entertained? I like how he says hello everywhere. All right, I got it. There we go. Just making sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I totally lost my train of thought now. Um, me, I read. That. Um, we're evolving. Humans are being replaced by AI. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So uh, anyway, um, who reads the terms? <laughs> I literally Not just you. showed that. Come on. <laughs> yeah, tell that to all the people though. who get screwed over by <laughs> the corporations. Like, oh yeah, you, you didn't you read the terms? Yeah. On the so, contract? so anyway, um, now I've lost my train of thought. With uh... just just to further yeah, yeah, yeah. derail you, um, w watch the Centipad episode of South Park. Yeah. Oh, sent iPad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, cannot read. Getting getting back to do everything, to, but it cannot read. <laughs> getting getting back to, to the topic here. Um, I just feel as though um, what's going to happen, right, uh, going forward, is that mankind's lifespan it ha is relatively short, right? So over time, the way that we're going to stretch out our lifespans is that we are going to merge with AI either externally or internally with Neuralink or whatever. Um, we are going to merge with them in order to master things as in the matrix. I know Kung Fu, right? Um, faster. So that we can then utilize those things by just paying for, I guarantee you, subscription service. No Kung Fu as long as you pay. $28 a month or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's going to be like that, right? Where, and when it comes to AI art, what's going to happen in the next generation is that, so what I'm sort of getting at with, with the ability to comprehend more complex things is that artwork has also evolved dramatically in terms of where our perception is in things about design. As we have continued to further what we are doing like you you have people built like standing on the shoulders of giants right building off of the previous person's uh iteration on something right and so um japan has a a culture surrounding um uh, no drama and kabuki and that's all about striking imagery so anime takes those extremely dynamic poses the colors you know uh the gestures and that is one of the reasons why it has become so successful. And that influence has come to the West and caused our stuff to get even more, ha have to evolve further. Some of it's just gone, okay, well, anime uh, has that erogure, uh, grotesque and erotic thing going. So we made it more gritty, right, over here. You know, not everything has gone into the dynamic, you know, thing but still the style of artwork and you look at iron man's first suit versus the ones from later on where he's got the like exhaust pipes coming out you know what i mean so the point is that our comprehension comprehension and ability to like what's the word like fabricate out of thin air concepts and imaginary ideas is getting more and more Whoa. refined and because of ai uh it is only going to continue that path. And what it does is it gives you like a level 60 brush, you know, in terms of like the talent behind it, so to speak. Um, obviously it's not a perfect metaphor. It gives you a black belt at the beginning instead of it after years and years of training kind of thing. Right. And that's where I think things are going to go. The people, uh, the most effective artists are going to push that tool further and further and further, you know, and it will just constantly evolve that way. But all the people who got comfortable, right, going back to my main point about TV, radio, video killed the radio star, so to speak, are about to get steamrolled. They will disappear out of the industry. And then the people who work in this new setup 
are going to become the new Titans, right? So anyway, um, and then I also saw this, just kind of a sub thing to wrap up this point. Uh, this person said, my friend who works uh, for a company selling audiobooks just told me that their boss is replacing almost all of their voice actors with AI software that costs them $20 a month. If lawmakers don't regulate this tech immediately, the damage to entire industries will be immeasurable. Damn. It's already too late. Nothing you do will save your industry. Get better at utilizing the AI now. Anyway, then we've got pickups. Do you want to do pickups, Reese? Uh, sure, I guess. Um, Maybe. so let me do let me do visual pickups first, you know, because I've got yeah, some. Yeah. Um, and then uh, <laughs> people finding it. Um, so uh, I'm gonna do visual pickups first, and uh, I'm gonna dip out for. We're gonna try something because uh, the recordings for Streamyard, uh, mine are always failing to to save the local recordings of just just my track. So I'm going to try to split them by leaving and letting them finish uploading while you guys do pickups and also while you guys do write stuff so that I can try to, so instead of it having to do like six hours worth of a recording that, that it can't catch up on, it does one hour, then maybe two hours oh, worth. We of got it and angry. Then, yeah, I saw it. We got two angries. <clears throat> so anyway, oh, cute. Um, I picked up a gun buster. I don't think I showed this last podcast. So this is the discotheque gun buster. Uh, and then this also came, Lupin the Third Angel Tactics, and then Record of Ragnarok Season One because I got I've got immense FOMO from Danny saying, "Are you gonna get? Uh, did Did you already buy?" He said Record. Of, he said something else, uh, Legend of Ragnarok or something. Anyway, and then I was like, "Why is it out of print?" He's like. No, I'm like, oh, I already pulled the trigger on it. And then I don't know if I, I found this in my, um, uh, when I was cleaning up my office and I found this, I don't know if I ever showed it. It's the uh, season one, part two, two of Mushoku Tensei. So we'll do that watch club at some point soon. And then uh, it's not that special to me since it's like my third one, but I managed to pick up a third copy of the uh, um, animation, or was it? Uh, why am I imagination? That's what it was. Uh, the imagination um, Borges set. So complete. Anyway, uh, Greenline, you want to go next? I, I yeah, but I only have one. So I, I just picked okay. up Outlaw Star. Right on. Uh, the uh, nice. standard collection from eBay. Hmm. And uh, right that's on. it for me. Okay, Reese, pull into uh, Discord. I'm gonna split for a second. I'll be right back. Uh, share screen. Wow. My right, connection sharing? like completely died throughout Brad's whole thing, so let's hope oh. it holds up. Am I sharing correctly? Yeah, I can Yeah, see you're it. sharing. Thank you. Change for okay, so uh Mega Mug picked up from FDDM a whole bunch of Inuyasha and uh exclusive anime collector patch. And then I picked up a also Risa Lup patch. Lup Lupin the Third Angel Tactics on Blu-ray. And then I also I picked up uh, Legend of Zelda Two <coughs> Kingdom for Switch. And then the uh, yeah, I'm surprised we got you here on the podcast today. Oh, <laughs> uh, what you call it? Majora's Mask Link Amiibo and the Tears of the Kingdom Link Amiibo. How and many Mega hours Mug do you have? <laughs> hmm. How many hours of Tears of the Kingdom do you have logged in so far? I only have two or so. Right. I, I did it the first night and then like I got out of the first like the Sky Island with the four shrines and then down to the like the Damn. shelter area. And then that was basically it. And then like the next day we left and I just left the switch at home. So uh, Damn. now I've got uh Mega Mugs picked up uh Update with the time and stuff. Sister returned first volume and gave me a second, and it's getting me a second to sixth volume. The other ones haven't arrived yet. Didn't realize uh, so, that what are those? The light novel? Oh no, the volume. Yeah, this, this, these are both the light novels. So oh, the, this is okay, volume it is two. the light novels. Okay, the cover. Both of these. 
this this is uh, novel two and novel five. Novel six. Novel six. Uh, novel six. Yeah. Okay. yeah, six. Yeah, it's hard to read because it's all. Like... All right, and then uh, FDM picked up from Reese stuff. <laughs> Reese stuff. Yes. Are oh you my take god. It away, FDM? It's I so mean, small. Yeah. One sec. I'll increase my brightness. One. I'll. I'll. Let's I'll see. We got. For you. One Dava style. One Dava style collection two. Yeah, one Dava style, and then I got the Ilya Prismas that um were released. We're Fantasma. still missing like season three, um, which now. is a shame, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. All the Sentai things, obviously, I got because they were cheap as balls. I got the sasami thing just because it could go next to the Tenchi sasami stuff. Um, and then Strawberry Marshmallow, I got the OVAs just because we noticed that the TV series is out of print. So I'm like, oh, well, I should get the OVAs while it's still there and on sale. Celestial Method, that I think that one was just one of the dirt cheap ones. Uh, Argivolant 2. One will be coming later, apparently. Saga mm -hmm. Reset. Apparently that's 20-something episodes. I'm like, yeah. damn, son. Sagrada Reset. Oh, sorry. Sagrada. Plan Z. And then Plan Z, which is a comics wave film, apparently. So, um, and it was a dollar. But, like, that's the only reason I got it. Otherwise, it looks like AIDS. Um, then Nurse Witch Komugiar, which is a sequel, I think. Um, I don't have whatever the prequel is. <laughs> is the Order of Rabbit Seasons 1 and 2? Uh, I finally got those because I remember ages ago, people wouldn't shut up about the Moe. Uh, is, is the Order of Rabbit gif meme? Speaking of memes, I got the gas guzzling girls with uh yeah. what's it called NK NK shoujo yeah. like, is that and her own spine? glass lip yeah. is it i can't tell it might not be it's so small <sighs> and then uh glass lip hana yamata and <gasps> Digimon Season 1 English Dubbed Collection. And it looks wonderful. And I also got... Oh, damn it. I didn't have a picture of the secret Reese figures you <sighs> sent me. With the, the Saber Leomon and the Piximon. Well, I can show them next podcast, I guess. So, uh... Then Kenichi Season 2 to complete, uh my rebuy of it so now it actually looks good in my collection i hope they get the stupid ovas uh then tales of fantasia which has a really weirdly centered spine um i briefly checked out the disc and it's definitely an upscale it honestly doesn't look the best but hey whatever at least now i own it um Oh yeah, and Kiss X Sis, because we gotta support the Juden Chan creator, right? Um, the OAG and then, series. Yeah. I guess there's a TV series as well, which, who knows, maybe Disco will get that and we can complete it. And then, Urusei Yatsura, Always My Darling, so I finally have all six of the movies. Uh, and now I just gotta get the TV series, I guess. Oh yeah, and then Card Captor Sakura, the movie, the first movie, which does have a slipcase because it was reprinted with one, which I'm so glad about because now yeah. everything looks nice in the collection. And it actually, you know what? Um, I have the slipcases for Clear Card as well, so it looks even better. And then was that Vampire Hunter D Steelbook? Yep. Yeah, yep. Got that because that was final on sale. Allegedly, this has a slightly better disc according to something that I read a while ago, but maybe I'm misremembering something else. And then Fatal Fury Steelbook, because I might as well just get all the Discotech Steelbooks, right? Keep mm -hmm. up to date with them. And then Release the Spice and Mysteria Friends, which were, uh, you know, they were reasonably cheap 
and you know sentai sales so i'm just like eh, okay and a uh, mysteria friends is like half length episode so i'm just really <laughs> confused i'm like why did this get a low edition <laughs> it's like 150 minutes but whatever <laughs> anyway that was my reese stuff order yeah, and that's it so podcast 1.2 and let's see who's ringing the Tiny Peach Club. <laughs> uh, so to, to respond to Mega Mug, did did they even make an Animax dub for the movie? Because I'm pretty sure it's the like ADV dub or whoever released it, Genion. I for can't what? remember who released it originally for Card Captor Sakura. Oh, um, I thought NIS. Had the it. movie dubs, I'm pretty sure. What? We're talking about the I thought, movie. I, I, oh, the movies? Okay. I was thinking yeah. of the series. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's whichever dub we got over here, which I think is Genion or ADV, whichever one it was. Mm. Disco Texture release Maze Bakunetsu Jiku. They should also include the OVAs and that have and that movie. That was never released. Hmm. Bang Zoom did the card capture movie. Well, there we go. Apparently, JT wants the, that Kick Success DVD. I must have missed where he showed the DVD because that was a Blu ray. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, well, how's everybody doing? You heard it here, folks. Oh, I was just going to say, you heard it here, folks. Uh, JT good. likes that sis. Mm. He likes Wincess. No. <laughs> Says the guy who has it. Uh, got a message from. Oh. Apparently, AC's recordings aren't going anywhere for him. Recordings. Oh. Yeah. His recording. Kiss X sus. Who does it like Kiss X sus? Uh, someone with a decent brain, I guess. I don't know. Hey, we haven't watched it yet. Maybe it's fantastic. It is made by Juden Chan creator. Mm. Fine, I'll hold my reservations. But incest is so kind. I don't know if they actually incest, but the sisters want to, like, rape the main guy, I'm assuming. <laughs> That's kind of grody. Yeah, he's totally into that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I, I think I think they're step-siblings or something, so it's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the rule, right? Ugh. Yeah, not related by blood. I, I think that's what it is. I don't actually remember. HBO Max by Max. What? I don't know. So, is Random Eleven still with us, or did he die? I'm still here. Huh. I'm just playing I think Zelda. I don't have any pickups. Oh, he's uh, playing Zelda. I got the Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition. I got the Ooh. Tears of the Kingdom Special Edition Switch. OLED Switch. Um, I got the Tears of the Kingdom Special uh, Pro Controller. Dildo. Pro Controller. And the Amiibo. Hmm. Um, Is there anything you didn't get? The, Is the I'm better question? I'm disappointed that the Link Amiibo doesn't give anything special yet. I got the uh, Astro Megazord. Power Rangers Lightning Astro Megazord. So much I, got, I got the Batmobile from the uh, new Flash movie, the McFarlane's Batmobile. Is this a pickup still? No, we're done. We've been done for about five minutes. 
waiting for you to come back. It still says zero percent uploaded. Hmm. How's your daughter? She's all right. I'm probably just was gonna it lose. like it? Was it like a small nip or was it more serious? Than it's that? the dog that's much older. <laughs> so she's pretty good with around kids. The dog. My daughter deserved the bite. I know it. <laughs> Her behavior. All right. I forgot that I had gotten food. My wife gave it to me when she came in, and I put it on the chair, and then I proceeded to take off. I take off my jacket and threw it on the chair. <laughs> anyway, all right. Wait, the Shonsky, did he sell your whole MTG collection for six twenty? Wow. <laughs> How's the petition doing? Because you shared it on the YouTube community tab. He sold over thirteen hundred dollars USD in Gunpla and his MTG co collection for six hundred and twenty dollars. Ouch. I'm sorry well, that... well, the Gunpla thing makes sense. That's probably like a model kit because he got, gets the premium Bondi <laughs> stuff, but the MTG collection, like, he hasn't gotten MTG in a good long while, I assume. And I'm just wondering, like, damn, I don't know if you're, like, way undercharging for that. But, um, either way, it's good to see you, Gundam Sensei. Mm -hmm. I have much enjoyed our Gundam talks. And I got some panel lining fluid, or whatever it's called. It, it's Do you still at five have the community tag? <laughs> I'm doubting the uh, legitimacy of your community tab comment, bro, because... Do you even have that? Don't you need to be... Um, a thousand subs, yeah. Yeah, or whatever. Greenline can attest to that because I said, "Hey, you should make a community post." The one time I was like, tisk, tisk. "Where, where do I do it?" <laughs> yeah, I can't yet. <laughs> what a shame! This is a great podcast clip. It is. I'm so glad that I've <laughs> slowed us down to this point. Yeah, random eleven. Put the. <laughs> Put the um, timestamp as nothing happens for X minutes. It's, it's just going in pickups. Yeah. <laughs> I'm picking up this food right into my gullet. <laughs> oh. Man, unfortunately, there's a doctor who's stealing all of the... Oh, I found you. Who's <laughs> stealing all the SEO of your name. <laughs> 24 kits and all, all of his magic the gathering. Damn. I hope you meant 620,000, man. Yeah. You do have you a community had, like, job. Eight. How does your what? second backup channel have more? Mm, all right. He did show his stuff before yeah. I went to Discord. Like a bug. Me? Greenline? Footnim? What's up? Who, who showed their stuff? Did Footnim show his stuff? Yeah. I did. Showed... I showed it all. I exposed it, it all. on stream. He yeah. showed his dick in a box. <laughs> did you get him the dick coloring book too? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> He got right me there. something better the other year, or that same year, actually. Okay. <clears throat> Apologies for the delay. I lost track of where I was. What were we talking about? Oh, yeah, pickups and then... <laughs> oh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> Green chair, bitch. Boy, I should never have left the call. All of a sudden, my um, read Twitch chat. Oh, Twitch chat. Oh, sorry. 
Oh my god, is yes. there actually an arrow stuff in here? I see it. Hold on. Did, when you say special lands, did you have any original duels? In the pickup segment, which I graciously delayed many minutes so that he had time to comment this on Twitch. <laughs> it is going so goddamn slow. Tonight. At least we have something nice to look at. At least we've got this timer indicating <laughs> the slow motion I put us through. <laughs> I think I need to clear my cash. <laughs> yeah, you gotta take it easy. Close. JT says, this is on. karma. Mm. <laughs> Uh, karma uh, for what? <laughs> well, you mean karma? Everything you mean that we did was caramel? fully endorsed by you. <laughs> you mean caramel, JT? <laughs> so I cannot put Mirage Leonardo's comment up. Can you please I'll put it? I'll start. That one? Thank you. Yes. Uh, Mirage Leonardo says, I forgot to post a meme in Discord today where I walk into the Pawn Store, Pawn Star store, and say, I bought you some new. Some I brought you some news articles for the OCA podcast, and the bald guy goes, "Best I can do is three. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the bald guy is real. All right. Anyway, okay. I don't know. I have no idea where that came out of. <laughs> the, the, but, the link, the the uh, Tears of the Kingdom link, amiibo. Okay. So, in other news. Can you full screen this? Because I it's too slow over there for me. <laughs> You're murdering me right now. <laughs> All right. Russia recruits Steven Seagal to teach martial arts to its to its soldiers. The actor, who has been a Russian citizen since 2016, has opened an Aikido center in Moscow. I just like the idea that the Russians actually think that they are going to have ground combat, Ooh. right? That they actually need their soldiers to know Aikido, which is a defensive martial art, by the way. Aikido yeah. is 100% reversals, meaning that you can <clears throat> only respond by being attacked with Aikido. It's one of the worst uh, Japanese martial arts that there ever is. Dude, know. it is a great martial art if you're being attacked. No, it's great. Look, it's great, right? If you're being attacked, if you incorporate karate, judo, jujitsu, it would be uh... it would be one of the greatest martial arts if you okay. combined them with other merch systems. idea. Um, Steven Seagal Isekai. Um, I didn't. I didn't want to start fight, so I maxed out my Aikido, right? <laughs> <laughs> or, or AKA the English translation neck snap. I want to I didn't, to go I didn't want to start fights, so I only finished them. <laughs> <laughs> I want Steven Seagal to replace the actual seagull in the Little Mermaid remake. At least that would make the movie somewhat more interesting. So it says here, Steven Seagal. Steven one Se of the yes. I was going to say, Steven Seagal was the only part of the Onion movie that was good. Do you remember that? The Onion movie? Yeah. They had this phony uh, movie in the Onion movie, and it's like, Steven Seagal is cock puncher, and he hits two guys <laughs> in the dick off a motorcycle. <laughs> what? The I'm Onion gonna, movie. How have I not right heard now. of this? <laughs> Don't make it's mad. like literally The Onion but they had a oh, movie. Oh, The Onion. Okay, so The Onion, like the uh, the parody satire news site. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So Steven Seagal, one of the icons of American action movies in the 1990s and early 2000s, has just opened an Aikido center in Moscow with the intention of preparing young Russians to join the Russian armed forces. 
Seagal, who became a Russian citizen in 2016, is a seventh Don black belt in Aikido, as well as being the chief instructor within the Russian Federation for his martial arts uh, of this martial art since 2018. Quote, the young people I saw today have a very big potential. <laughs> Young people. We need to we need to open more such centers to develop that potential. <laughs> it is important that the development of Aikido. Sorry, Stephen, are you all right? You need to make it sound like your your arteries are a little bit more clogged. I need it. Uh, I need the AI to finish for me. <laughs> your young people. I saw you. It is important that the development of Aikido progress at a faster pace than AI. Right? <laughs> Seagal told Russia. <laughs> so I love this. I Seagal has never hidden. Aikido from a chair. Right. <laughs> Seagal has never hidden his support for Russian President Vladimir Putin, whom he has called, quote, one of the greatest world leaders, if not the greatest leader alive today. Putin recently awarded him the Order of Friendship. <laughs> the Order of Friendship. That is the gayest <laughs> dictator <laughs> award you could get. <laughs> at, at least a purple heart, right? Like a medal, right? Like that's a medal. Like the Medal of Honor or something. The, yeah, the ones that they just Honor give or, out to anybody just because. Or, or like a five star uh, medal of friendship. It's, a, it's like a wristband, a paper wristband yeah. of friendship. <laughs> Just a, it's a BFF locket. Like it's, it's literally so, marriage without being called marriage. <laughs> God. So it says here the actor who previously spoke, who has previously spoken in favor of Russia's annexation of Crimea, visited the Russian city of Olenivka and its prison camp for Ukrainian detainees last year. Yes, Lishansky, thank you for noticing. <laughs> I'm a method actor when it comes to being Steven Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Putin is in the room with me. <laughs> so in 2021, Seagal presented Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro with a samurai sword on behalf of the Russian Foreign Ministry. This is the funniest thing. First of all, Steven Seagal is morbidly obese underneath whatever the fuck he's wearing in this thing. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs> you, you would think with all the money. Okay, here we go. <laughs> what they did show Look was him getting beast. off. They, what they did show was him getting off of a forklift before he started walking down the hallway. <laughs> we're, we're hearing. Look like, at um, him. He is an absolute music, like, unit. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> He's also so like funny, seven feet tall. Really tall. The, the funniest thing about this is he gives Maduro the sword and Maduro goes full weeb immediately upon receiving it. Watch what he does. <laughs> he strikes a pose. Full weave. <laughs> Fucking what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he's doing the movie uh, samurai he pose. Goes put, he goes to put it back in the sheath and he tries to put it in backward. Oh. Absolute weeb. <laughs> anyway. I, I hope I hope the, the students of Seagal that he's, you know, they mm -hmm. they learn sambo and other uh, mar uh, Russian martial arts because that's not gonna Aikido isn't gonna help that much. Well, he probably he probably he probably also trains in hap keto, which is the one that includes strikes. But I don't know. I hopefully because if not, then he's not really teaching them how to defend I mean, themselves. If he, he's he's, he's he mastered defense because he couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> there, there was a story that, you know, Gene LaBelle, right? Mm -hmm. He put him in, in a uh, chokehold and he shit himself. He okay. Was, King yeah. style. I am happy to have you here because I am going to blow your mind. 
Gene LaBelle is my father's judo instructor. Holy shit. Number one. That's fucking sweet. Number two, that story is true. <laughs> and uh, according to the story, as I've heard it, Seagal has threatened numerous people in that class uh, to not tell the story because a lot of people were there when it happened. So confirmed. Here Let's tonight. tell it again. And Judo Gene said, hey, I don't have to do this, okay? I can let go. No, put it hard. And he he shit himself. I don't know if he shit himself or he pissed himself, but it was <laughs> one of the two. I think the story I've heard is that he pissed himself. I heard the shit version, but... <laughs> I mean, I lo looking at him, I wouldn't not believe it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does seem to be pretty full of it all the time. Right, leave Steven Seagal alone. <laughs> so jumping in here, first and foremost, I'll just say that uh, that other Kickstarter whose name I already forgot, they haven't started it yet. <laughs> Shards of <sighs> whatever it was. I forgot. <laughs> anyway. Doesn't matter. Shards of crap. So uh, Keisuke Uyama has a best-selling Love Like the Falling Petals uh, Kickstarter coming soon. So Pedophiles. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Shueisha presents the English release of the Japanese novel that inspired the hit Netflix film. So um, that will be... We'll, we'll cover this as it's coming out. And then Mirage Leonardo shared this coming up as soon as the fucking tab closes dear god there we go <clears throat> for uh japanese monster movie bakemono no cgi horror film so this is uh doug ruse is addicted to practical effects and he's done a bunch of these um kickstarters to help him make films that are 100 practical um so if you watch the trailer, you can see it's actually it is a Japanese film like it's or it's taking place in Japan. He's in it. But every other actor appears to be Japanese. It's in Japanese. Uh, he argues about how CG is the worst in the cinema ever. Anyway, so if you're interested, there is a Blu-ray tier. OK. Fully loaded Blu-ray of Bakemono, $35. Or you can pledge $100 and get the exclusive Crazier Blu-ray. Or for $4,000, you can get the Extreme Cut on Blu-ray. That's the furthest it will go. And it says here, it says here, exclusive crowdfunding only cut of the film with more nudity and more gore. Oh, God. So... The four thousand. I, I thought the four thousand dollar tier was going to be, uh, you get to be in the movie on set. You can get the practical butt plug in your ass scene. Yep. <laughs> so, so this is what you actually get for the four thousand dollar tier: the extreme version of the film, exclusive to crowdfunding. Uh, the problem with saying extreme is it will be too much for some and not enough for others. But for those who like extreme horror, this will have exclusive footage in that vein. The entire film will not be different, of course, but you'll easily be able to spot the excessive insane shots, gore and nudity, not someone slicing bread. You also get the different exclusive $100 Blu-ray from above and the executive producer credit and the $35 Blu-ray so you can have all three cuts of the film. And the way that he described it here is you get the extreme cut on special Blu-ray, the hentai cut, and the regular cut. So, Whoa, uh, what? Yeah. So basically it's a porn version? Well, the hentai cut is the $100 one. It's not even the extreme cut. But I'm not paying four thousand dollars for some random guy's thing. To find. Especially, especially, I was going to say they, yeah, they could have. I don't want to I pay four thousand dollars for a dog. Sorry. <laughs> I I funded his entire thing with the with the goal here. Anyway, so that's a thing. If you guys want to check it out, it's in the back. Wow. Yeah, you'd think that uh, the four thousand dollar tier would have at least been like. You know, we made a full on porno of this, and here's the full. You, you're in the non... starring, starring role. 
I mean, that too. I just meant like they'd try and sell you on the 4,000 because it's like, oh, it's exclusive, but there's full on penetration. (laughs) Dildo Man returns. Okay. So. In other news, load, damn you. The Netflix live what? action One Piece release date has been leaked by accident. Exhibit A. <laughs> Coming what? soon to theaters near you. God damn it. <laughs> so it's coming out September 23rd because the Instagram page for the cinematographer um, has posted one piece premiere September 23rd on Netflix to advertise, you know, that it's coming out. Um, here he is on the set with Nami's actor, Emily's tea party. Thank you for your amazing talent replying to him. She's, you know, the verified Nami. So anyway, it seems like it's very likely um, that we are going to be getting a trailer soon. Uh, I'm thinking One Piece Day. Isn't that like uh, July 22nd or something like that? There you go. I'm surprised there isn't a One Piece porn parody called One Penis. Well, that merch needs to get made. (laughs) The search for the One Penis. (laughs) You should just... No, you should just use that shot when uh, Luffy's on that island of women who have never seen a man before and there's mushrooms all over the island and they're trying to take the mushrooms off and they stretch his dick like a few meters or whatever didn't know that was something to look forward to (laughs) yeah just use that shot on the shirt and called one penis like that's all you need all right all right so also to um, rule them all (laughs) also they've they've leaked somebody uh snagged photos of the marine cadets uniforms Beautifully fast internet tonight. Just absolutely stellar. Fucking fantastic. Hey, we got a new follower on Rumble. (laughs) Something tells me they didn't get the link to the petition. (laughs) All right. So anyway, these are the Marine Cadet uniforms. I am not a one piecer, so I don't know what... uh... Uh, I mean, they look all right. Yeah. All right. There you have it. All right. Moving on. It's it's not one of the uh, more difficult things to get right. Right. So. Yeah. They do look kind of baggy to me. In the pants, like they're not like tailored. Well, I mean, in the anime, it's not like he draws them like super crisp every every time too. So. So Michael Toole tweeted this out. You're all set, Michael. We emailed you your receipt. See you at the movies. Yes. Ha 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 ha. Yes, et cetera, et cetera. So he was excited to go on Thursday, May 11th. All alone in a tiny theater waiting for my terrible live action Saint Seiya movie. And they canceled it. What? No, no, no. I ordered my ticket via the AMC theater site because I am Stubbs. I am a Stubbs A-list member. I fought my way through traffic. I sat in the theater for 15 minutes while commercials blared, then looked for help. The floor manager told me I should have received the cancellation notice. Lol. Nope. Per the floor manager, Sony Pictures has canceled most of the Knights of the Zodiac screenings because of drastically underperforming pre-sales, which LMAO, wow, really? I am not surprised. But it would have been nice if someone had told me at any point before about 3.30 p.m. Anyway, fuck you, Sony Pictures. I am part of what is probably a pretty small group of people who earnestly wanted to see Saint Seiya, and now I probably won't get to because I'm too darn busy the rest of the week. AMC have (sighs) come through like champs. They are buying me curly fries the next time I go. Love you guys. Anyway, be advised. (laughs) It looks like you can use some curly fries. (laughs) 
<laughs> anyway, be advised, Knights of the Zodiac showings are weird this weekend. Call your theater to make sure before you hop in the car if you bought in advance. So there you have it. Uh, that's a thing. Guess what? Let's take a look at the box office earnings of this clearly a masterpiece. Domestic opening, $557,000. Total gross so far, $760,000 for domestic. Where's the total? Is that the bottom? No, what? No total? Oh, here. Uh, international, 4.5 mil. Worldwide, 5.5 mil. Whatever the fuck that means. Is that is that but both it combined? It looks so good. Why? It does look Why it does it... look decently good in terms of like just the uh the aesthetic looks production. Yeah, the production. I, that's a good way of putting it. Looks photo real, but it just doesn't look captivating at all. You know? No, are you you're joking? It looks so great. They should have marketed <laughs> it better. Yeah, so um what was the uh cost? 60 million? 60 million. $60 million budget. They have made $5.5 million back so far. By the way, I don't remember if it's three movies or six movies, but this was planned to be a series. Yeah. They have some of these actors locked in for three movies. Anyway, I'm sure that they will be bought out of their contracts. Anyway, in additional news... If anybody's got any comments, I'm, I should. I have not looked at the chat in a meaningful way. <laughs> uh, well, there I are comments about how, how live action cannot happen for, with anime. I mean, they can oh, waste their money if they want. Uh, you can just still watch the original <laughs> anime. Glad I stopped for that. <laughs> All right. So Sega is looking to possibly adapt more IP into movies, to which I ask you, what IP do they possibly have that they think will will bring them success on the level of Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> it's saying your upload is complete now, but it doesn't have you tagged for another one. You see? Oh, it says error on the uploads page. They got yeah, Nights in the Dreams. They can make a movie about that. But nobody's gonna go see that. Uh, Why would well, that guy else... that, um, the creator guy that uh, did all the you're like, right chicanery I'm sorry. with the stocks, he'd go see it. The creator and his mom might go see it. You're right, but <laughs> in the proverbial sense, nobody is going to go see that. As in, it will not make them money. <laughs> I'd go see a Jet Set Radio movie. All right, so the cool 2T is the only one to hit it so far. A Persona movie, possibly. Even so, then, I'd say nah. I do not think that Persona in live action would translate well in terms of like the stuff that happens in it and all that. Stay with JoJo's. It, it barely made it through the anime adaptation, if, if you ask me. Exactly. Like they it's a mystery and they have way too much to solve. They could barely fit into twenty six episodes. So a movie would just be asking mm. for killing yourself. Marazion says <laughs> Comic Stone is supposedly getting a live action in the style of Scott, Pil Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, we talked about that. But see here's the thing though. Like yeah there are other properties that are somewhat popular, but the reason that Sonic did well is because it's their IP that everybody knows. You know? And the reason Catherine did so well, I'm assuming, is because it was a game and you could choose your adventure and it had the little puzzle sections and all that. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not getting that in the actual movie. You're just going to get this weirdo drama thing, right? Is Catherine the one that had, like, the tranny or whatever? They had a new special uh, re-release that included a tranny uh, Catherine. <laughs> that included a tranny or included new pronouns or something? No, a new person called Catherine because there's like two Catherines in okay. the original and there's like a I, I can't remember if the third one's also called Catherine but it's a like third one with a third leg yeah a third one with a third leg so, so anyway it would be very funny if that is what they decide to do and they do the tranny one and the movie bombs because nobody actually wants to see that and then they're like what how could this have happened you're, you're, you're all transphobic <laughs> 
they all have trans AC. Trans air conditioning, it transitions from cool to hot. Damn. Anyway, so a recent a recent investors meeting for Sega's parent company, Sega Sammy, revealed that thanks to the Sonic the Hedgehog movie's success, they're open to even more movie adaptations of their IP to widen their audience. Bro, it's gaping because of Sonic. <laughs> You're not going to widen that shit anymore. <laughs> When the spokesperson was asked about Sega and other companies like Nintendo expanding their IPs, Nintendo too. Like Zelda, sure, you could try it. Metroid, no, that's going to bomb. Kirby even, probably going to bomb. You know, you could you could maybe get Kirby out there if it was like handed off from Mario, like in the trailer kind of thing in some way. Anyway, so... um. They answered that it would be very effective if movie releases and game launches could happen in tandem and also increase ways that Sega franchises could be approached or become recognized. As such, they felt that if the opportunity arose, the company would like to take on challenges other than Sonic as well. Other than Sonic, another prominent Sega IP that got a live-action adaptation was Ryuga Gotoku, which is the um, Like a Dragon uh, Yakuza series. Uh, back in 2007, Sega has also recently acquired Rovio, the maker of the Angry Birds franchise, which also spawned two animated movies and also owns Atlas, which is the ad- which has adaptations of its popular Persona series. So there you go. I'm sure it's going to do great. Mirage wants a Star Fox movie. Well, you can watch uh, the dude who makes those animated uh his own animated thing <laughs> on youtube all right so streaming news we got a sad memory uh i hope you're ready for your wounds to be torn open again that's the memory of how slow my internet is that i'm reopening that wound <laughs> all right i remember so when your internet your was internet, fast um i'm gonna take a shower and right on I- buddy Green Line's got work early tomorrow. Take, it. Take my leave, so I'll be seeing you guys. Have a good one. So, as I was saying, he tried to remember what this article was before he opened it. I, I remember it when you used to have good internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Billy Kamet's childhood friends are going to be streaming Super Mario 64 for charity. So it's been almost a year since he passed away um, due to colon cancer. And this brings me back. Okay, now my mojo is coming with with the internet. It's delayed, but I got it. Um, What I was talking about before, uh, sort of with voice actors and stuff, can anybody confirm or deny for me whether or not Billy Kamitz got the vax? I'm I'm just asking because some, some, like, rumors are going around that I am not lending any credibility to, but just curious. Some rumors suggest that rapid cancer growth is being reported among people who got vaccinated by, uh, for, for the COOF. So I'm just curious because it would be a tragedy if the entire industry that virtue signaled so hard found themselves at death's door. James Carter Cathcart just retired with his lung cancer. Billy Kamitz died a year ago from stage four colon cancer. Like, are we at the precipice of a died suddenly uh, OCA podcast edition? Like, do we need to be reporting uh, soon on like, voice actors and industry professionals just dropping every you know which way so i don't know i hope not obviously um i mean i i mean this 100 sincerely uh billy kamitz came in to, like i don't there aren't any vas that i legitimately think about and go like oh yeah greatest va ever or like yeah i don't particularly care about any of them Aside from maybe like Richard Epcar, who has an extremely distinct voice, you know what I mean? Um, there just aren't My any of them. Man. There just aren't any that I really, you know, 
give a rip about. They're all basically the same. There's a couple I like, like Brittany Karbowski and, and Richard Epcar, right? I Billy like Kamen. how Joseph, uh, JT says that Vic could be next. He's losing his hair. <laughs> yeah. Damn, <laughs> I, I lost my hair a long time ago. I'm still alive. <laughs> so I doubt Check Vic me. would be next. Be, just, just on the grounds of um, his, his stance on COVID. Uh, let me rephrase. I, if... If there is any credibility to the suggestion I, I uttered about the potentiality, he's more likely to not be in that Vic camp. Vic is less likely to be in that camp, although all of us are mortal and could die at any time. <laughs> but we all will stay here. Whether we, we will like mourn you. Joseph, I, I will I will accept your friend request on Facebook. And and when you do pass, I will I will start a new oh, position God. for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway let's get off this topic <laughs> yeah because de- it's for youtube demonetizes us so anyway um yeah so so billy camas died a year ago and his um his friends and family are coming together to do a super mario 64 stream on youtube uh to the benefit to benefit the colon cancer coalition um and so if you guys are interested in that it's going to be may 20th. Great job, me. Uh, from 7 a.m. So if you're interested in that, too fucking bad. Because <laughs> uh, it was yesterday. <laughs> wow. Oh, someone went into stalker mode just now. In the comments. Uh, oh, I thought you were talking about me. I thought you were talking about me. I'm like, I hate to say it, but I haven't commented at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You, also. You mean, you mean this stalker? This one right here? Who says he's not a yeah. stalker? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for drawing drawing it painfully to its conclusion. <laughs> so, in other news, um, my anime list got hacked. Uh, Reese, do you want to give a quick rundown of exactly? Uh, what yeah. Happened? So, um, whatever day it was, like the ninth or something. I don't know what day. Probably the ninth. Uh, I think it was actually May tenth um, or tenth, whatever. Or it was a Wednesday. Yeah. I think it was a Wednesday. Anyway, you so out quick. So, um. Like all all the the uh, entries got like renamed to say let's all love Lane, and then the site went down because you know obviously the administrators oh hey we've been breached we got to shut everything down we got to figure out how what what's going on how they got in fix it and you know, close up the hole change all the passwords and all that so it was down until like Friday night um you know two two three days later and so but everything's back online everything is to be good everything's got what was Lane renamed to, or did it remain because they want to boost the score? I, I would imagine it was just it was renamed just like all the other. I bet you it was really no, hard no. to search for Lane. <laughs> exactly, that's what I was gonna say. They were gonna artificially try and boost Lane to like ten out of tens, but you can't <laughs> find it because everything else has Lane in the title. So, in other news, uh, Full Metal Alchemist and every other anime was uh, knocked from its pedestal as every single entry on the top list was "Let's All Love Lane." <laughs> anyway, so then, uh, if you want to read a little bit about how they responded to it, we've got their. Um, Notice of emergency maintenance you can check out. Is my information mm-hmm. safe? User information is handled and stored in a manner in which meets government regulations. At this time, our investigation has not revealed any data breach of our user's personal information. So, yeah, you're probably okay. But I would still change my password, um, which they forced you to. But you know what I mean? Like elsewhere, if you use it somewhere else. Anyway, mm-hmm. in streaming news, Baki is uh, coming back for season two this summer. Baki Hanma. Is it always called Baki Hanma? Is this is this a different this follow-up is, series? No, this is that like, is season two. This it's is season like season two, season two. Season four of total. So part one is coming well, out July twenty like, sixth. Part two is coming out a month later. So so spread out. Your Baki watching. the Grappler was the English dub name only. We're talking about the remake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so Baki um, Grappler Baki was the original. Uh, release of it that OVA by NAC Studios um, okay. or NAC Productions or whatever they're called. Then there was then the Baki one that was the by Gomzo. Yeah, Baki the Grappler that was released over here uh, by Funimation. And, and now then the there remake was just, is just Baki. Was just Baki. Actually, wait, hold up. I think the remake isn't a remake. I think it's actually a sequel. It is because it's a sequel. Yeah. 
Yeah. Whatever. But, yeah. but but the point is that the, the Netflix series is ju- it was just called Baki, and now season two they're extending it to Baki Hanma. It no no there is one that's Baki Hanma. This is the second season of that. Of that one is that what it was? Okay. Oh, that is so confusing. That. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think I think you're so right. That makes more sense. There's two seasons of Baki, and now this is the second season of a different series that comes after Baki called Baki Hanma. Yes. I think it might have been a prequel, but maybe it literally just is the like, sequel. Baki Hanma, Son of Ogre, and then Son of yeah. Ogre season two. As as uh Ekash says, where Baki Hanma is the part that follows Baki the Grappler. So he says it's just following the naming scheme of the manga. So I guess Baki Hanma is how the the manga goes to be called that after Baki the Grappler. Interesting. Something like that. Wow, that's not confusing. Surprised they didn't call it Baki the Wrestler or the Shooter. Baki <laughs> Makaki. <laughs> no, the Shoot shoot means like real and wrestling term, so I'm surprised yeah. they didn't call him that. Uh, that's probably because they already had shoot fighter Tekken over here, or or Hooker, which is the old. Yes, movie. another great title, <laughs> Baki the Hooker. I yeah, like that was, it. The, that was the older version of Shooter, which meant real. All right, so Spriggan uh, has marked its broadcast debut with a new visual and trailer. So it's coming out on Japan, uh, in Japan on July seventh, um, and it's premiering. No, it already from no, wait, yeah. never mind. So it's coming out in <laughs> Japan on Tokyo MX. So apparently <laughs> this has already come out, and I hadn't I hadn't pushed us to watch it yet. So what I'm trying to do here is say, hey, we should do Spriggan, the original OVA, uh, because since Amazon is not is not wrestling our, uh, they're not giving back our our so our affiliate account. Uh, I think we might as well just. Uh, Embrace that and start doing watch clubs that are for currently airing things. Not that this is, but you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> I think he's right, anyway. talking to himself over here. I'm not a stalker. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's like something a stalker. You, you missed the one where he said, like, hey. "Where he said I miss movements." Buddy, she does not miss you. <laughs> 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 Oh, yeah, and he calls her breakdown iconic. That's like me saying I'm a music icon when I haven't released any music. <laughs> All right, so Japan's first ever arrest has occurred for uploading okay. unauthorized gameplay videos. I, so I like you... the first half of that better. They've made their first ever arrest. <laughs> yeah, forever. So a YouTuber from Nagoya was arrested on suspicion of copyright infringement for uploading gameplay footage of the adventure game Steins Gate, My Darling's Embrace, making it Japan's first ever arrest for uploading video game footage. According to the police... Yeah, if- careful, Reese. Don't let's play your your version of it. Actually, wait, this is a sequel or whatever spinoff. That would be hilarious. Japanese Come authority. get me, Japan. Re- yeah, they come to Reese's house. Reese, you want to race? <laughs> you put your hands up now. So, according to the police, 52 year old Shinobu Yoshida, a YouTuber from Chikusa, Nagoya, was suspected of violating copyright law after uploading gameplay videos of the Steinsgate title on YouTube without permission. Additionally, the YouTuber uploaded multiple spoiler videos that focus on on the endings of anime that reached a total of 5.5 million views. Yoshida admitted to uploading the videos knowing that it was illegal. Now, I've got a second half of this other article here that I thought was phrased better. So the videos, which were monetized and collecting ad revenue, contained the game's ending. That's the thing he originally got in trouble for. But in addition to the gameplay videos, Yoshida was also found to have uploaded videos of the Steinsgate anime adaptation and Spy Family anime. These were not complete episodes, but instead have been reported as fast content or netabare videos. In Japan, fast content is a term used to describe condensed versions of a series episode or movie. Netabare translates most closely to spoiler, but in criminal discussions is generally used in reference to videos that extensively show the ending of a published work, as opposed to short reveal the plot twist clips, such as Darth Vader saying, I am your father. 
Hmm. Yoshida also reportedly added captions and narration to some or all of the anime videos. Should have done that for all of them, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Fair <laughs> use. <laughs> so at the current time, non-monetized video game gameplay videos from Japan from Japanese uploaders aren't hard to find on YouTube. A key difference, though, at least in the eyes of Steinsgate rights holder Katakawa, may be the type of game involved in this case. Steinsgate is a visual novel, and as the name implies, the gameplay consists primarily of reading, with few prompts or inputs required by the player. With the intended appeal being much more watching the narrative unfold than directly controlling the on-screen action, right. visual That's novels what I was bring are, up. comparatively, closer than other games to a book or movie. Because of that, watching the video of Steinsgate gameplay is arguably a far more viable substitute for playing and buying the game for oneself than it would be with a different game with a higher degree of interactivity for the player. Right. Yoshida has admitted to the charges saying, quote, I knew it was illegal even as I was doing it. <laughs> that sounds like, get fucked, Nintendo. <laughs> in, in a statement following his arrest, Coda, Japan's content overseas distribution promotion organization, asserted that, quote, in principle, any use of gameplay videos requires permission from the rights holder. Damn. Come get me. <laughs> All right. Also, I did not test the copyright on this, but we're going to risk it. Because <laughs> the internet is so goddamn slow, you won't ever see it anyway. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> That's interesting. How did the my anime list thing happen first? Is that is it really that bad? My <laughs> my, I'm gonna leave and come back. This is a good point for me to leave and come back. Okay. Now, when do we leave? Uh, when do we lose King Style? Oh, he just he just dipped out, and I'm glad to see that when I tried to leave, apparently I didn't leave yet, and I can still hear you. Wonderful. Leave. <laughs> you're, you're, you're still in the call. Yeah, you're Fuck still. I'm proud sharing. of you. This Gaijin is still here. No, he's not. Boys, we are alone. Daddy's not here. Oh. So how far you got in Tears of the Kingdom? Zero percent. Uh, uh, somebody asked that during... Uh, I think Kingstyle asked it during... Or did you ask it? No, it was... Uh, Greenline? Greenline asked how many hours. Okay, so I... I got off the first guy at the island and got down to like the emergency shelter area or whatever. And then that was basically it. And I left my switch at home. So that's where I'm at. Random Ivan, how many robot penises have you exploded so far in the game? None. Uh, surprisingly, <laughs> uh, the, the urge to make a robot penis man <laughs> has never <laughs> come over me. How, how many Koroks? How, how many Koroks have you crucified? I don't know. Probably <laughs> in the low hundreds. <laughs> I low need to go. Hundreds. My friend needs me. Need freaking cross. <laughs> I know, it's like I like that idea. That's funny. <laughs> Does the performance uh stack up better than the first game like it's more optimized this time um well so the first game had performance issues in like very specific spots like what um, i don't think i ran into any really I mean, unless well, i did and i just didn't realize it they 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 put a patch in that corrected some of it mm. um midway through the life cycle of that game but specifically the uh, Kakariko Forest, um, that one is like in front of the um, 
the big tree where you get the master sword um that's like known to have really uh low performance um i know that in this game people have said that there's been performance issues i haven't run into many there was one time where i i noticeably saw some chugging but other than that i think it's fine <laughs> okay uh, the internet did get <laughs> All right, cool. So, <laughs> as you see, folks, I need your money now more than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your otherwise daddy, you're degrading your yourself to, to OnlyFans work. Yeah, no, uh, Daddy <sighs> Carlson's going to help somehow. <laughs> You guys are so wonderful. <laughs> we know. We know. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Gaijin, Gaijin YouTuber harassing train passengers. You know, I'm going to stop screen sharing this and share the audio. <laughs> I forgot that part. Okay. This is easily the most train wreck I have ever made this show. Fantastic. All right, here we go. The internet is slightly better though. I am I am liking that. Are you fucking it, serious? I love how this face is like what the anytime now. <laughs> All right, Gaijin YouTuber harassing train passengers confronted by Good Samaritan Gaijin. So a dis a disrespectful Gaijin YouTuber was harassing people on a Japanese train by hurling racist insults before getting confronted by a good Samaritan who happened to be a Korean American showing the duality of gaijin in Japan. The footage that angered Japanese netizens showed the gaijin YouTuber on a train asking other passengers, do you know Hiroshima and Nagasaki? And making comments about dropping atomic bombs while repeatedly dropping N-bombs <laughs> to the confused passengers who obviously didn't understand what he was going on about. So I'll just give you a, a general idea. You know Hiroshima? You know Hiroshima? Nagasaki? You know? Why you do this? Hiroshima! Nagasaki! Yes, man, nigga. Yes, Hiroshima. So as you can see, uh, the greatest content YouTube has ever seen. <laughs> anyway. Um, truly, truly the epitome of, our, of the race. Truly. It's so great, it shouldn't it, be released. It gets more and more cringe because as he gets as he gets stopped by the uh, the uh, Gaijin Good Samaritan. You know what he's saying? You know. You know what we do to This you. is the Good Samaritan. We will do again. Do what? Hiroshima Nagasaki. You understand? You think I'm Japanese? Where are you from? I'm from America. Where are you from? What's your ethnicity? Texas, buddy. What's your ethnicity? I'm Korean. Then sit down, brother. Why don't you sit your ass? Korean War, you know what happened to you? Don't touch me. Don't touch me, brother. Korean War, North Korean War, you know what we did to you? You said to me? You better move on, man. Just, just calm down. Man. You know what we do. Listen See, to how many subs here? Bro, I'm at thousand subs right now. <laughs> nice. You know what? I'm making money from this. <laughs> cool. Sit down, bro. Mm. Enjoy. I'm just saying. I can say with full certainty, as somebody who's rounding up on two thousand subs, he is definitely not making money for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, during the harassment, the YouTuber gets confronted by another gaijin who tells him to leave the Japanese passengers alone. When asked where he's from, the YouTuber responded, you know where I'm from, and claimed to be from America. That's that it's Though it's pretty obvious, based on his accent and poorly spoken English, that he was from somewhere else. Hold on. No. So the, the sorry, sorry. The YouTuber responded when this guy asks him where he's from, and the guy says he's from America. The guy holding the camera. But it doesn't seem accurate because he's his English is so bad, is what, what they're saying. Anyway, the Good Samaritan Gaijin, an American hailing from the great state of Texas, went on to reprimand the other Gaijin for causing a disturbance. The what YouTuber Chad. has since deleted the video from his channel. 
all, along with all of the videos showing life in Japan. But he still has videos of himself on kick, enjoying Japanese restaurants and Tokyo Disneyland. Japanese netizens, com Japanese netizen comments mostly expressed annoyance towards the one guy gene and praise for the other. Quote, I don't get what he's trying to do. What a simple minded person. Quote, I wonder if he would have shut up if one were to ask if that's why Americans are racist towards their blacks. <laughs> Quote, <laughs> calling people out based on race is the absolute worst. Quote, why did he come to Japan? Is he dropping money in Japan to do this? What we learned from the war was to never go to war again. That's it. There's really no point in arguing over it. Go back to your country. This is, this is why so black ironic. people are hated. Oof. Oof. They lose arguments and resort to violence. Yikes. That was YouTube. Damn. That was a Japanese netizen's uh, opinion. Uh, the, uh, they have a history of, of racist treatment, yet for some reason they look down on Asia. Spitting facts. Makes sense why people are racist towards them. Ouch. Japanese getting <laughs> saved wow. by a Korean today. This is today's Japan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is uh i'm sorry stuff. wait a minute blacks were still slaves during world war ii i don't think that that's that works. not true not in the u.s <laughs> i mean maybe in like uh like very poor um sub-saharan right? africa <laughs> yeah maybe like sudan or like Johannesburg, you know, places like that. I mean, certainly in more in the war on terror, <laughs> there were slaves <laughs> or, or uh, Somalia, you know. How kind of that Korean Nichan, big brother. Uh, I never knew the true colors of blood. Okay, <laughs> this is, um, I'm just saying. I think it, who was it? Jesse Lee Peterson or whatever his name is. Jordan said, Peterson. No, not Jordan Peterson. Jesse Lee Peterson. Okay. The black guy who who's like, uh, Beto, that guy. Oh. He, he once said, uh, he once said, um, that the vast majority of America is not racist because being racist means hating somebody for the color of their skin for no reason. And he's like, <laughs> Damn. And he said, he said, black people have given Americans plenty of reason. That's wow. that flashed in my mind when I read that line from from uh, from the Japanese here. And look, I'm just saying, no ill will or anything. Like, I obviously mm -hmm. this guy is a complete dick bag. Should not. Uh... I really, really. I'm just noticing the watermelon motif behind him. And it looks like the KFC logo with the yes. apron. Like, oh, God. <laughs> this with was the bait. purple apron. <laughs> this was bait, and the Japanese netizens walked right into it. <laughs> Maybe the Alpha Chad was the one who set it up to look like the hero. They said, I mm. never knew the true colors of black people. I, I used to think white people being racist to black people is terrible, but I have realized that I have more to learn. I just want to point out that one bad apple can completely, the black. holy shit. It's, it's insane, dude. Like one person being bad. It's like, well, these. Black I want people, a series of movies by Quentin Tarantino wrong. about the one black guy who ruined China against black people and has led to the history that they've had with their movie posters, uh, minimizing and putting a mask on black panther right like I just... even even though like the mask for any superhero should be on regardless but yeah <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that makes people racist towards black people if he were in texas they would have used a machine gun to turn that loud mouth of his into a beehive Holy the japanese God. have a <laughs> Well, at, in the famous <laughs> words... Wow, they're up. very extreme about this shit. Well, hold up. In the famous words of JT, Texas, yes, we are an awesome state. Congrats. So there you go. He, he oh, condones the machine gun no. treatment, apparently. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, one bad person, it's like, oh, man, <laughs> these people shouldn't be in Japan because they're so Yes. Bad. Yes, we do. <laughs> 
Uh, no ill will, JT. We love you. All right. <laughs> My little boy is about to explode. What? <laughs> is that referring? Is that supposed to be like the A-bomb? Like <laughs> euphemism? Uh, thank you, Korean bro. Korean bro was pretty cool. Korean bro was way cool. None of the Japanese spoke English. Like a third world country. So lame and embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> that Korean Nissan was actually being Japan's Nissan right there. So you're saying that the whites were right to treat them that way. Jeez, imagine, imagine one person. This is the power of YouTube. One person is a shithead and it destroys the public relation between countries. You know what's messed up? And you know, there, there was a similar thing that happened, but it was much worse than this. Uh, you, you guys heard of this female pro wrestler that was who uh, ended Hana, herself? Hana Kimura? Yeah, Hana Kimura. Mm -hmm. she, uh, a friend of mine told me part of the reason was because she's half Japanese, so that didn't help. She was like uh, Taiwanese or uh, Filipina mm. from her dad's side, I think. Mm -hmm. And people said, oh, no, it wasn't that it was because that's why on the show they treated her like crap even though it was all orchestrated by the producers mm -hmm. and stuff the fans online they didn't care they harassed her they harassed she... her over the fact that she knocked that one guy's hat off after they orchestrated the event where he washed her, her um ring gear wrestling uniform yep. um mm -hmm. and shrank it mm -hmm. and yeah like they and according to you know what we've covered on the podcast at least the producers had told her to full on slap him because they looked at her as uh, the heel, right? Yeah. In yep. wrestling. Yeah. Bad guy. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and she kind of, that was kind of her role in Japanese pro wrestling, right? So they were trying yes. to get her to blow up and just be a stereotype thug. Right. So yep. they asked her to slap him in the face but she couldn't bring herself to do it. So in the moment, she just flipped the hat off of his head. And apparently that triggered the, the Japanese viewers so severely that they decided to bully her into suicide. And that's uh, sad, you know, and that's very tragic because it's, <sighs> it, it, isn't it true that they had to pass a law now in Japan because of this? Like yeah. you, can't, you could go to jail. For yeah. There is jail time that. for social media. Um, statements or something like that it's technically, mom... it's, it's technically murder it's technically murder you drove somebody to, to end themselves because of that uh, it's bad. I, honestly i i very I much disagree be, because, because, to because them, she was a real person so i think it i think it's a dangerous situation regardless i do agree yeah but i don't yeah. like the idea that we call it murder in the in the grounds that a person can log off from we sort of we're, we're going to rehash this real quick but basically the idea is we've talked mm -hmm. in the past that there is no such thing as online harassment because you can always log off That's however true. in the in the world where you're a actor or you know internet not internet even but like just a a social celebrity. media yeah like you're a celebrity who who is um you know, social media is part of your brand I, and that, identity. Yeah, that's your livelihood. Yeah. So like you can't it you cannot walk away from that the way that a guy who has a a normal daily life as a you know cashier at fucking Whole Foods can walk off actually of whatever, anon on 4chan or, or but he, he could or he could walk off of whatever drama is occurring on his digital profiles mm -hmm. and live a normal life outside of it a celebrity doesn't have that same luxury it's much more difficult to, for them to walk away um they can delete their social media but it's detrimental to them either way you know so i don't agree that it's murder um but i do agree that it is dangerous and it's not an easy um it's not an easy problem to fix you know, because what honestly should be is that she should have a team that manages her online presence that deals with they take all the arrows instead of her, you know? Yeah. Because 
Because this is what happens with people is that perception is reality. And when you are bombarded by, um, when you're bombarded by negative things online and every time you, you open up your computer, it's another email. Every time you look at your phone, it's another message, you know, whatever. Um, that does isolate you and put you into a place where it's dangerous for your mental health. But if you just filter those things out and you live in the real world, you will realize that those things do not affect you. Now, doxing and all that creates a bridge, you know, and, and there may be there may be something around like the idea that that swatting is murder, right? They, the intentional purpose of doing that is to murder somebody. I wouldn't say that bullying a person necessarily on the internet is the same level. You know what I mean? Especially like if, you... if you're the one who's your hands, or, or sorry, that, that individual who takes their life, the blood is on their hands at the end of the day because they went ahead to make the executive decision, you know? Yeah. And like, for example, we've seen a, a several times where somebody will say something in response to some controversy and their best friend, you know, somebody super close to them responds publicly on the social media thing in a way that is okay for them to say because they're best friends, but the rest of the world observing it does, isn't in on the joke and they full on attack that individual for being insensitive or whatever, when like in reality, the person would have said it directly to their face, right? Standing That's next a, to them. Like, you know what I mean? Stand, yeah. Like you tell your friend, you tell your best friend, just go suck a dick. And then like, yeah, like somebody, that. like somebody says, for, here's a perfect example. Like if, if, uh, if I said, guys, I, I, uh, I was just diagnosed with throat cancer and Foodnum replied on Twitter, shouldn't have sucked all those dicks. Right. Like <laughs> could have been an obvious joke that like, and even at my expense in a trying time, I would welcome because that's like the normal coming back, yeah. you know, like, but everybody, of everybody seeing that comment reacts to it. Like how fucking dare you? He's dying. Well, you know? Well, that comment, that thing you said about having the throat cancer and sucking dick, it makes sense because you're the cock collector. Yeah. Yes, I, I have oh, noticed good. that you guys changed my name. I choose. I, to, I think a, I choose a good to analogy. Accept my my new fate. persona. <laughs> I, I think a, another analogy that we can make I've, is I've that, already um, got dragon dildos coming for pickups next week. <laughs> this is your, this oh is no! Your, this is Please your new no. normal. <laughs> my, my new normal. You want to be on that movie Kickstarter, don't you? But um, I'm I think a, a good a good analogy to put it is uh. Let's say that uh, you tell someone to go suck a dick and it's like saying, well, that's sexual assault because you made them go suck someone's dick. <laughs> or, or, right? or just, just homophobic because you know they're straight. You stuck that dick right in their mouth. <laughs> and you can also like consider like if, if someone tells someone to kill themselves and they don't, can they arrest them for attempted murder? <gasps> like... You know, mm. Mm. JT. Apparently, your um, your your mega clout in the community uh, with your community tab isn't as mega as you thought, because we still are no closer to sixty nine. Get on it, share it in more places on the Twitter you don't have. <laughs> Yeah, I can't share it there because you, it would be. You know, I I, uh, I agree that <laughs> like murder or whatever we're saying. <laughs> I, I, I get that like they don't physically do the the act themselves. They don't kill the person, mm -hmm. but when the person is like mentally um, unstable, un, un, unstable slash unhinged, like they don't know where like it drove them to the point of madness i get that it's not exactly that but uh, you I can't don't... exactly get a temperature reading on their <laughs> mental health that's real true quick, I, real quick i just want to i just want to <laughs> but uh, the way can't... that 
Hold on, yeah. real quick. The way the Korean bro went in to remonstrate, like remonstrate. nothing, remonstrate, <laughs> like nothing, was really cool. Uh, on the other hand, the Japanese that quietly sat there after being told all that, mm, mm, that yeah, man yeah. has atomic bombs, badass. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Too bad he didn't save those atomic bombs for the G7 Hiroshima summit. Oh, damn. Uh, YouTube, that was a commenter. <laughs> He's black and dirty on the inside. Oh, he, you guys are... he was reading a comment. So I'm just YouTube. saying, um, I was, yes. I'm just saying, sadly, uh, it is it is quite possible to bring down your entire race uh, in the perception of the Japanese. It's easy. You, you can do it. Anyway, you were saying, uh, King Style? I was saying that, like, I get um, that you can't tell sometimes whether somebody is in the right state of mind or not. Mm -hmm. JT uh, is telling us now that his mental health is good. I want to yes, kill thanks, myself. Jake. Thanks, JT. Well, you definitely you should. really want to know about them. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be an awkward timing for your three vaccines to, to kick in, JT. Oh, <laughs> anyway, sorry, you were saying, uh, King Style? I was saying, regardless, like, we can't tell if somebody's good or not, but we also kind of have to do a balance, too. Like, you know, try to be considerate for others, but, you know, life's totally. not perfect. Uh, we're going to mess up at certain moments. I know I have. Uh, yeah. You know, I said something jokingly and, you know, somebody didn't take it too lightly. So, you know, we just got to try to to murder right now. No, God <laughs> damn it, I'm just saying, we, no, the trial gotta... still hasn't been resolved. Oh, yeah, dear. I legally can't talk about the proceedings. Yet, we don't need but... this rabbit hole on the podcast All tonight. Right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just saying, well, we basically got to bounce to and try not to fuck up. That's all I'm saying. Mm, true. And it's really cool to see um, to see people actually step up in the middle of all this, like this Korean-American guy did. This Korean and, uh, uh, Chad. Yeah, it was really cool to see somebody actually intervene when somebody's just being a complete dickhead. He defended the honor. It would have been hilarious <laughs> if I had super cut the Jordan Neely strangling into this. Oh, but no. Sure, that, might All right. have, that might have been a step too far. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. let's not do that. Okay, yeah. now that we've thoroughly been canceled. <laughs> now that we've given YouTube Thank all that audio. Thank goodness we're also strum <laughs> streaming to Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that we've given YouTube all of the audio to uh, transcribe and, you know, blacklist us, uh, yeah, let's continue. All right. So we covered the My Anime list thing. Okay. <laughs> In the theme of black people and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Black Panther. <laughs> yeah, and some uh, KFC. <laughs> Yeah, you're not screen sharing, just so you know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm waiting for it to open, bro. <laughs> Look, just right. turn on your multicam setup with your Chinese spy cams, activate the dick cam, and then there we go. <laughs> Alright. Window. Dick cam activate. I cannot believe how fucking good, good. fast it, the internet cam. was until yeah, I... It, it's, it's Until I asked it to start streaming. Cam. All right. So Creed 3, um, the Japanese screenings for Creed 3 in Japan are going to include a special anime by TMS Entertainment. Ooh. So Michael B. Jordan revealed on his Instagram that the um, that the anime is going to be directed and written by Megalobox staff. So I doubt it's going to look just like this, but the imagery that he shared... Kurido uh, was uh, this one. And he said, Hi, Japan. We made a special anime as a surprise for Japanese fans that will play at the end of the film. Creed 3 opens in theaters in Japan next weekend. Get your tickets now wow. to see what it's all about. So I ask you this. 
if this is released on the Blu-ray, do I have to put Creed in my goddamn anime collection? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you would have I, I'd keep it in your live action collection if you even do get Unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, I have a uh, live action and anime mixed as long as they're based on a Japanese entity. So or well, I've, got, I've, got the animatrix over, I've got the Animatrix over my American collection just because it's mm. like in the Matrix collection box set. In the yep. four pack, would Michael B. Jordan voice the if they do an English dub of the of this? Do you think Michael B. Jordan? Would you, do you think he to... wouldn't? No, uh, it depends no. on the money. I like, think Phil Lamar actors, should voice it. But... <laughs> certain actors wouldn't do it. Some no, I think would. he definitely would. I mean, he's I think, kind of already part of the. He is a he. They should get Christopher Sabat to do no, no. it, and then get Christopher Sabat. To <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I think um, I think Michael B. Jordan would do it because he is an anime fan. Um, but here, the thing is that TV and movie actors or whatever doing anime roles always sucks. Like it just never. They can't act. Rehashing the statement real quick. Anime voice actors are tr are they have a practice? You know, like they they have a skill set developed where all of their acting is conveyed through voice right everything they give is done auditorily that's all they can do right to, to convey the acting visual actors rely on their looks their movement the glances in di different directions right you know so they don't translate well their expression yeah they use their expression more you know to try to sell whatever they're saying so they actually, when they voice, um, when they voice characters in anime, like you know, like Miyazaki films and even um, uh, some of the to Shinkai quote, films. To, to quote Seth Rogen, "I don't voice act." Yeah, um, <sighs> they uh, they don't usually live up to the level we're used to. You know what I mean? Uh, very few, very few actors who do live action, you know, movies and stuff become successful voice actors for um you know cartoons and whatnot except for people like uh mark hamill but in his particular situation that was a career shift into... because of his uh because of that car accident that disfigured his pretty boy face when he was still at that stage of his career anyway welcome back king Sun. so lonely castle in the mirror anime films uh u.s theatrical dates have been set so they're going to have select theaters June 21st and 22nd. If you're interested in seeing it is from Keiichi uh, Hara, who did Miss Hokusai and Colorful. I'm assuming they don't mean the panties colorful. They mean the one about the suicide or whatever. That's what, yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, that movie was pretty good, but I mean, it's all right. But it did not have panties, so... <laughs> <laughs> Full letter grade P drop. Panties are bust. <laughs> Crunchyroll to bring Psychopath Providence anime film to theaters this summer. So Psychopath Providence will hit theaters in, in, in Japanese with English subtitles and English dub in North America on July 14th with special advanced fan screenings on July 11th and 13th. Um, so I don't know what that means. Is it going to be in theaters onward from July 14th? What's the point of the special fan screenings? Is it not going to be an anime expo? It seems like, why wouldn't you just do that? Um, <laughs> this film will also re uh, release this summer in Australia, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, France, Belgium, Benelux, which is a place I've never heard of, uh, Spain, Mexico, Chile, Peru, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. It just seems like all the places that need to get the dystopian forewarning about the Sybil system, right? Where's China on this list? Yeah, I gotta see. Yeah, right. That's what I was gonna say. Like, all but China. China's too far gone. Yeah, and Hong Kong too. Mm. I mean, they, they already Arathur, have the idea. Arathur seventy three says, "That's a testy subject." <laughs> it's like a pastor. Can you click on it? My thing is fucking bruh? dog shit. Bruh, that came out Please click on it. I can't. Yeah, what? It's, it's 10 plus years old. Anyway, 
Uh, so I got to look this up. So this is an actual place, Benelux, a political economic union and formal inter international intergovernmental cooperation of three neighboring states in Western. What? What? God. Can I fucking see, please? <laughs> Man, the final boss is the internet today. The the headquarters is in Belgium. Yeah, really. Yeah, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Netherlands. That's what it is. Wow. So they they went and formed their own European Union inside the European Union. It's like we'll have our own EU with hookers and blackjack <laughs> and blow. <laughs> oh yeah, it's Belgium, blow. Netherlands, <laughs> Luxembourg, Vanellix. <laughs> wow cool. wow okay anyway so they so did a patara it's a triple patara earring fusion right there yep it's a it's a regular fusion dance with one regular person <laughs> and somebody who already had patara earrings <laughs> right Jeez, ah, that's a mega fusion right there psychopaths came out in 2012 it's only 10 years old so here's a question if you did fuse with the fusion dance with somebody who had the patara earrings and it had the stupid retcon where the patara earrings stop working after a period of time or whatever wow. right what would happen if you unfused with the patara earrings while in the fusion without them the weakest would, link gets pooped out yep would so one person would get shot out would, would the wardrobe change? Would you would you all of a sudden be like a <laughs> major wardrobe malfunction? <laughs> You'd be naked. You wouldn't be wearing your the fusion clothes or your original clothes. So um in anime news. The internet has been so good tonight that I have done a terrible job linking all of these various things I tried to loosely join. <laughs> In terms of like a narrative structure for this podcast, I've done so fucking well. Thanks. I think the fusion dance thing, like the thing we'll never find out about is like, I mean, those guys have to share a dick. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> but here, here's another one. Okay, scenario. here's another what, question. What, what happens when a male and a female on. combine? Hold on. Yeah. Oh, so no. here's, a, here's a much more important question. Bulma and Chi Chi Patara earrings... Goku Vegeta dance. Is it an orgy when they yes. when they dance? Yes. <laughs> Technically. Yeah, at least it'll be epic. But here's the thing. What if Goku and Piccolo fuse? Would they be asexual? Would yeah. half his dick fall off? Yeah, because Piccolo is asexual. He doesn't have any organs. Yeah. Uh, it kind of goes back to the question. Goku, Goku fuses with Piccolo, and he's like, "Oh, baby, here it goes!" Yeah, throws up an egg. <laughs> <laughs> they created a child. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> I'm Gokolo. <laughs> I'm Piccoloing. <laughs> so, in this corner of the world, Can't the hear Piku. Look at my. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just want to say that uh, not exactly the answers I expected when I asked. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if it's a male, I'd ask why the fuck he would wear earrings. Is the is the <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lishansky just followed us on Rumble. <laughs> Your patronage right. is appreciated. Yes. And it is time to once again share <laughs> with our... <laughs> <laughs> Donate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to our Twitch viewers, I'm going to ask that you uh, come give us your data. <laughs> <laughs> Please sign this petition. <laughs> All right. So anyway, in this corner of the world's director's next anime film the morning children a post second production trailer so uh my question is did he ever finish in this corner and other corners of the world you did he fucking finish that thing <laughs> every corner in the world 
He's finished in every corner of the house. You can tell it's the black light. Oh, shit. <laughs> so anyway, still waiting yeah, on it's, that. It's ectoplasm, guy. It's not what you think it is. In this corner of these nuts. <laughs> I just promoted it, bro. Weren't you paying attention? <laughs> what the heck? Don't worry. <laughs> Literally, none of the fields are, uh, are uh, going to... None of the fields are useful. Yeah, none of the fields are useful. Anyway. Unless you try to report it, in which case we find out if you're into full package or, <laughs> or not <laughs> when it comes to the food. <laughs> we saved we saved all the data we truly needed <laughs> for JT. <laughs> so an alien versus predator anime exists. This isn't supposed to happen first. Random Levin, I am so sorry for how fucked I, I am making you on these timestamps, but we're just going to do it in the order it came up. <laughs> sorry. Dude, the internet is... I, now I've lost it all together. <laughs> Where did the tab go? <laughs> the aliens and predators have been at war for quite some time. While the franchise did receive two films, there have been countless comics, novels, and merchandise that this... that has I, you know, has pit the xenomorphs against the technology advanced hunters while there has never been an anime that sees these two properties go head to head you might be surprised to learn that not only was an animated series approved but it was finished and remains unseen by fans to this day former fox executive joshua Izo recently took to took the opportunity to chat with podcast perfect organism not to be confused with our podcast. Orgasm? <laughs> the OCA podcast. What are you talking about? <laughs> Revealing the shocking info that not only had an Alien vs. Predator animated series been approved, but it was also finished and simply hasn't been released to the public as of yet. Here's how Izo described when the, pro when the project was originally going to be released and just how long it has been trapped inside a vault. Quote, this was going to be initially released on Alien Day in 2016. That was the plan. Now, what happened was, as we were going forward, Ridley came back to Fox and said, quote, I want to make another Alien movie. This was going to be Alien Covenant. And Shane came and said, I want to make a Predator movie, which is going to be The Predator. AVP, was, as a brand, was something that was frowned upon at the time at Fox because those movies underperformed but meanwhile, the intellectual property, just those words put together, alien versus predator, from a consumer products and publishing perspective, still worked. While not confirmed, Izo hinted at the director of the project, who very well might have been Shinji Aramaki. Aramaki, for those who might be unfamiliar with his work, helped produce Blade Runner Black Lotus, Appleseed, Ultraman, and Harlock. Why don't you just say Appleseed? Okay, like, come on. Um, anyway, so Ethos then took the opportunity to break down some of the Predators that appeared in the unreleased animated series. One of the Predators is a cyborg and has a fully cybernetic arm. Oh, so cool. And a cybernetic mandible. Whoa. It's and a super rad. And, and a cybernetic dick. manhood. Cy yeah, <laughs> cybernetic dick. One we called Bone because of all his weapons were made out of giant tusks. He was so cool. Uh, anyway, so uh, he went on to describe that there was a vast amount of work that was being done outside of 20th Century Studios originally when it came to the animated series. Companies such as NECA, Titan, and Dark Horse Comics, hmm, those sound very Japanese, were all working on different projects related to the animated series. I had deals signed. NECA was developing. Titan was working on an art book and a novel. Dark Horse was working on a comic book series. Those were all in process. Somewhere in the world, there is stuff that was being done. Someone has pictures. Anywho, so that kind, <laughs> that kind of that, so that kind of that was going on. Great job. Uh, going to be one of the big driving forces behind Alien Day 2016. Maybe that was. So that kind of was what was. That's probably what I meant. Anyway, uh, anyway, yeah. So there you go. Uh, that's news. That exists. Maybe we'll get it someday. Then I have to put all the Alien franchise in my fucking anime collection, you dumb whores. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great sign. I'm going to just pretend like... Fuck. Okay, there we go. 
My unique skill makes me OP, even at level one. Oh, no. Green line's not here. Damn it. She's a bunny girl. Oh. Yeah, I was telling Green Line the other day that these Isekai are getting way too, like, convoluted with trying to justify the characters having every single, like, cheat uh, code in the book. It's just like... Just make them God like instantly and then let's just get right into it. Like <laughs> Man, I've been watching Damn. um the the one where it's like I my my skills have paid off in the other world and I'm bringing it back into the real world. Oh, uh, yeah, cheat got... cheat skill in another world. Yeah. And yeah, no, every fucking you. episode he's like he's like just like OP the whole episode. It's like, oh my god. It's like, oh I have a I have a weapon that like one shots everything that just nicks it. Oh I have like like insta death. Insta death. Oh a robbery. That's the exact here. show I brought up. All, like all the, my st- brother all the was... stuff I all the drops I get can get make me real world money when I leave. Yeah, it's like he has literally an answer for everything and I I I'm enjoying the show so far, but it seems like there's no conflict for him. So I'll be interested to see how Just they're like going to add that. that. It's like the dynamic that more than anything than any kind of conflict. So how, are, like, what's he doing next? Is this like the draw? Referring back to AVP, Arathar seventy three says can only be better than the movie. Unfortunately, there are two movies, and they are both dog shit. The second what? one's even worse. No, no. Are there three? The first one was great. No. Yes. Hell no. It was a good movie. <laughs> no. I liked it. If anything, the second one is great because they like murder that kid in it. The <laughs> second one sucked so badly because I I didn't see the first one at the time. I only saw the second one. I'm like, yeah, I always wanted to see this. These movies look so cool. And I was like, "Kill me! This sucked." Yeah. <laughs> the second one was the one that made that looks like it was done on a student. Uh, yeah, it, budget. The one that takes place among civilization. Yeah. Versus in the yeah. In the Arctic. I fucking love how in the in the first one they're like, "Well, even though nobody actually really uses these, we're gonna give them green laser sights, so you're not confused with the red ones that are canonically in the Predators repertoire." <laughs> All right. All right. So anyway. Tempuru TV anime unveils a new key visual on July start date. So here are some waifus for you to smack off to at some point. <laughs> Especially the sexy one. Look at he's got a foot in him neck and it was too heavy. They had to tape his head back on. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Chewbacca for a second there. <laughs> and as I reincarnated, as a reincarnated aristocrat, I'll use my appraisal skill to rise in the world. I've been told this is decent. That was a, that was a strange pause. Uh, yeah, well, he's rising. So, <laughs> anyway, so uh, I think you'll get your up shorts there, Mirage. I'm sorry, uh, Mirage Luigi. Luigi. God damn it, Luigi, Luigi the Metal 64. Tell me I'll, you have to watch the show and let me know if there's any. I'll, I'll uh, watch the show for the Big Titty Witch. For the Big Titty Witch, all right. That's where the rising is happening. <laughs> Yeah, Madam, I am appraising these at the double floor. F's. You, know, like... <laughs> you can you can hold on to my staff anytime. Well, we completely forgot about the classic rising of the shield hero. Yep, that's definitely rising. Mm, yes, we did. <laughs> and my PC uses a Ryzen thing. processor. Oh no. <laughs> All right. So I also noticed, I couldn't help but notice. So uh, we were just talking about how Japan has gotten a, a pretty negative opinion of black people based on that one I will guy, be back. I gotta um, which is very unfortunate. But I did notice this last two weeks as I was collecting articles there, they are bending over backwards to put uh, black characters in these new isekai things. It seems like uh, so we've got this guy, right? Uh, and I guess I guess because these are all in a weird order now, I'm gonna have to just stall. So we've also got Delicious in Dungeon, uh, is a new show coming out. It's basically uh, uh, what do you call it? Food Wars if it existed in dungeons. Is it wrong to cook up girls in a dungeon? <laughs> God damn. Yeah, that does not sound like cannibalism whatsoever, right, guys? 
All right. I mean, hey, I wouldn't not watch it. Okay. And then Mashal, Magic and Muscles, English dub, reveals that Alex Lee is going to voice Mash. Well, and it just, it looks to me English like... English dub, they, they, are you kidding? They they announced it with the uh-huh. initial announcements. They, that one didn't have a dub announced. Well, now they've got one. And it just so happens that they're casting based on looks once again. <laughs> oh, boy. Because uh, if you ask me, I mean, they look fucking identical. The tiny mouth, you know, like the unassuming stare, you know, like the. Ba- <laughs> you know what's funny exactly is that he was like, identical. <laughs> he was like super expressive in Demon Slayer, but for this, he looks like the stoic, like emotionless mm-hmm. type. Yeah, because he voices Zenitsu in uh, Demon Slayer. So also, um, the rest of the cast is also here. So um, Ben Diskin is going to be uh, resurfacing here. Uh, Reese and I were talking before Reese left <laughs> about I like, um, I like Ben Diskin. Yeah, like he hadn't really been in anything for a while. Uh, last thing we we came up with, like when we were thinking about it, was um, Digimon uh, Joseph, Fusion. Joseph Joestar in the Young Joseph. Yeah, uh, you, age. Yeah, in part two of Bat- Battle Tendency. That was yeah. fucking awesome, man. And then Reese let me know that he's also number one in yes. Codename Kids Next Door. And, and now and I can't. And number two. And number two. Now I well. can't unhear the fact that number one sounds just like um, uh, Joseph Joestar. And it, it's like when I learned that Fry had the same voice uh, in Futurama as Doug from the show Doug, it like it ruined my life, that discovery, because Why? I can't. I can't unhear. No, like I, I, I like both roles and everything, but it's just like it, it melted my brain for a moment because it is the exact same voice almost, right? I, I had the same thing, sort of with remember uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, the Three Kings arc with Ryzen, right? All Ryzen is is, is uh, when he's regular Ryzen, it's Piccolo's voice, right? When he goes berserk, it's Vegeta, right? But that, <laughs> I'm that's serious. Both- that's both Chris Sabat. Yes, e- it's insane. E. Castro says he plays one and two. Yeah, you heard it. You heard it here first. He he. Uh, no, nah, never mind. I was gonna make an unsavory joke. <laughs> if, no, it, I know it's both Chris Sabat. It's just weird how like <laughs> I heard that. I'm like, damn. Yeah, well, Chris Sabat uh, has thrown all of his range away. He, got uh, lazy, for, least, he threw device. all of his he threw all of his range away uh in a a bold dare to only exclusively do the voice that should do the most harm to his vocal <laughs> I, I think he made a, a deal with the devil where he had to choose you either you pick to only do one voice style for the rest <laughs> of your life but you get a studio and all this crap or listen here you keep Chrissy. all your voices and you get listen no work. He, it's like Satan shows up and he's like, all right, listen here, Chris. I'll let you have your own studio. And in like 20 years, you can kick Vic Mignogna. But and from you'll now have every on, role in Dragon Ball. only do Piccolo boys. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, your Vegeta is going to be shit. Piccolo's like, going to be the same. In Piccolo voice, he's like, deal. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Go on. <laughs> All right. So anyway, take a swig of if I, uh, of I shall. God damn it. I shall survive using potions. Uh, looks pretty adorable. Uh, character and everything. So there's a new isekai you can watch. Fuck it. Moving on. Uh, Deco Boko Majo no Oyako Jijo TV anime reveals October 2023 premiere teaser staff and more cast. Uh, just saying. A lot of Chojins in this lineup. <laughs> and nothing Pedro against bird. it. Just saying, kind of, yeah. And the and the pe- peaking bird. Uh, just seems like uh, seems like some social outrage has uh, landed on the ears of the uh, companies, which is a shame because all of these things could be great shows. But it just like now it's impossible to look at, at it. Uh, from a different perspective than oh did you get forced into this <laughs> you know well you could also you socially look at bullied into doing this that's murder by the way <laughs> like <laughs> you oh jesus christ you can look into <laughs> if they had if their anime original or if they had source material that 
you know, pre-existed, predated the current events. Yes. True. Uh, but but most of the isekais don't appear to be that way. Sin Duality, Sin Duality Noir TV anime takes off on July 10th, reveals more cast OP ending themes. Oh, that was important for me to read. Oh. There's another one. And another so there one. is. <laughs> and another one. Do you think he gorilla fucks her in the show? <laughs> okay. Well, gonna... you, that was... Uh... <laughs> Poor oh, choice of animal. <laughs> Trying to take the <laughs> mic away from me. <laughs> that was a term of endearment in that context. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's either it, it could be worse. It could be monkey fuck or bear fuck. You know. Am I Yikes. actually the strongest? Are you kidding? Didn't we just talk about <laughs> everyone being OP? Just showing you more potential waifus that you'll go to jail for liking. Uh, sexless marriage, cool. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's like the the Family Guy episode with the FCC right. censoring everything in real life. Nothing. Figure skating manga medalist goes for gold with TV anime announcement. But is it better than Yuri on Ice? Is it actual Question. Yuri on Ice this time? Is it a boy? Yeah, is that a trap? Is that a trap? It's a girl. It is a fifth grade girl. It is a girl. girl. So it will be literal Yuri on ice. Because I was going to say, this looks like the kind of thing where he'd change his name to Luigi the Medalist 64. Mm. Mm. Is Luigi going to watch this and at the end when he realizes this is a girl? He's going to be like, the problem with Japan is they have a phobia for cute boys. (laughs) They're (laughs) cute boy phobic. Only Only girls can be cute. <laughs> Ayaka TV anime cast Kana Hanazawa Jun Fukuyama with the new character trailer. Wait, how does how does a non-black person voice? <laughs> no, uh, is that Vic Bignana's wardrobe? <laughs> He's wearing. It does. It look like <laughs> boots. It look like he. Look, all I'm saying is that it would be uh, it would be. Improper casting if it wasn't Vic voicing this guy. <laughs> that it, would be, it would be great. All you have to do is just have they're uh, culturally Vic, appropriating him. Just have right. Vic wear glasses while he's recording behind the scenes. I mean he might if he's old and his eyes are why is is it why does she look like a VTuber? <laughs> I think that was the intention, uh AC. To make hmm. her look like a because I think it's just the, the the concept art, but I thought it was just to appeal to the you know those uh, people that like. This YouTubers. looks so bootleg, low budgety. It does. It's a good thing I can actually see it in 1080p with no choppy frames or anything. All right, moving on. Definitely buying a second internet line. Holy shit, research. Uh, the, tight. <laughs> the wrong way to use healing magic. TV anime premieres and. In- I don't even know what's going on here, but you know. Did your mic mute for a second there? Did it? It did, like, because you were talking and then you stopped. Well, maybe his internet cut out. Okay. It's going to be nice. It's going to be nice to find out how fucked this episode is. <laughs> All right. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Putting an end to my misery sooner. Quality assurance in another world TV anime announcer ring. So this is from uh, March. I guess we missed it back then. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck this is. It just looks ridiculous. Like it. So obviously it says like choose texture. It's supposed to like sort of simulate like the game that they exist in requires better quality assurance because it's fucking destroying itself or whatever. Like the Minecraft Farlands or whatever is happening and all the mobs are suffering (laughs) like but the actual description for it sounds like dog shit nicola is just a village girl working at the inn until the day dragons invade and she meets haga a scholar of everything around him he's a part of an elite society called seeker created to address a series of maladies plaguing their usually peaceful world 
but both Nicola and Haga have secrets they hide. Ones that will change each other's very existence. So uh, I'm guessing Haga is the QA intern and Nicola is the NPC that he falls in love with. And that's going to be the story. Like that seems like a very real story uh, possibility. Then I just Atelier have to verify Riza, the... You just had to verify what? I had to verify the integrity of these nuts. <laughs> yes. So Atelier Riza, um, Ever Darkness and the Secret Hideout anime premiering July I think 1st. her thighs are the secret hideout. Dude, I think the, the, the trailer... trailer? Go ahead. I think the secret hideout is that thigh gap. <laughs> right. Yeah. The trailer is shameless on the amount of intentional thigh Five angles. Shots. Holy shit. Framed, you know, like framed. <laughs> framed. It is relentless with the thighs they knew they knew how they got there so they they're embracing to, it yeah. they knew yeah. where they came from <laughs> unlike modern woke uh subverted expectation properties uh they have embraced <laughs> the, the thick <laughs> all right also golden comedy season four uh just reminders season four yeah this is right, finally was... resuming from being put on hiatus last fall from because of the death of that one of the, you know, higher up in the production. That's right. right. Yeah. Um, what about died Ayakashi in the production. Triangle? Uh, well, he's referring to the. Uh, um, was it the manga for Golden Kamui where the person? No, died, the, this is was, it was the, the anime right? staff. It was the yeah. anime staff. So why are you bringing up Viz? Is Viz doing the the release? Because for for manga for the manga, yeah, and the manga the manga has been done. All right. So Viz has just got a couple volumes left to to put. Castro out. says, "No, it's a girl in the medalist, and the manga is way better than Yuri on Ice." <laughs> I'd have to see a compelling that's argument a, that's a, from someone. That <laughs> sounds like it's a low bar to, to beat. That, yeah, I was going to say, that that sounds like somebody didn't even bother watching Yuri on Ice. <laughs> Wait, no, I agree with him. Why am I phrasing it that <laughs> way? <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, you must have loved Yuri on Ice. Hard <laughs> disagree. <laughs> you didn't see that masterpiece. All right. So slam and fit characters that are cute and sexy are the best anime characters. Riza just has fat legs. <laughs> I'm Change sorry that mind. she's not. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that Riza isn't a cute boy. Hey, question. Yikes. Are you attracted <laughs> to boy thighs? If, if, if we were looking at your ideal boy, but he had, thigh highs that caused the leg to bulge out over the edge. Would it be a deal breaker? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So an artist has apologized and deleted their chibi Maruko doujinshi of Maruko as a drug addict. <laughs> wow. They should make so, that canon. <laughs> Gachi Muchi Pants uh, claimed he received a warning from the rights holder. So, Ashibi Maruko Chan Dojinsi, fan made manga featuring controversial subject of drug abuse, has caused quite a stir on social media. Enough for the Dojinsi creator to delete it altogether. Dude, YouTube shut up. That's maker... the canon ending. Don't spoil it. <laughs> and manga artist Gachi Muchi Pants tweeted on Monday that he has deleted several tweets featuring his fan creative work after, quote, receiving a warning from the official side. He also apologized for the excessiveness of the content. The doujinshi was titled Shabu Maruko-chan. The word Shabu is Japanese slang for illicit stimulant drugs. Oh, it also means shark or like shake or whatever. Hmm. Like Shabu Shabu is the thing where you dip 
the meat into like boiling water or whatever or oil and pull it out and mm. it's cooked. Shabu shabu. Um, according to the now deleted tweets, the story followed. Good job. Who, Kim Morrissey? Unacceptable double followed. The story followed an adult Marco becoming addicted to drugs. Her drug seller was a former classmate. The story was divisive at the time of its posting because its inspiration was a beloved children's anime that obviously has no mention of such adult themes. Um, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've seen lots of children's cartoon cartoons that have gone down the route of, uh, fuck it. We <laughs> next what? podcast, we will be covering the cancellation of the live action Powerpuff Girls that I apparently forgot to add into the doc. So that will happen <laughs> next podcast and would have been a great segue to, <laughs> Such a shame. I clearly got the roadmap and didn't spend too much time on all of the petition shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, so the reaction of the tweets have been divided. Uh, they remarked that the idea behind the manga is very entertaining. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, done. There you go. You knew Shaggy was doing drugs in the mystery machine, too. Don't lie. <laughs> also, don't, don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> a new uh, a new Naruto manga one shot featuring Minato uh, is being published this summer. Minato recently won the global character poll. So Naruto's dad. So they're gonna call this one uh, Boruto's grandfather. Um, <laughs> the one shot is the first wholly created Naruto work from Masashi Kishimoto in seven years. God damn! Hold on. Slim boys wearing short clothes are how you will have girls loving those boys. What about boys loving those boys? Because that seems to be the more applicable situation that you can comment on. I just want to know what is happening in your brain. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've got the secrets to the universe locked up in here. You don't understand the way we get the women on our on our side. Everybody... Put on your short shorts. You know, like, <laughs> it's just strange. <laughs> anyway, in addition, a new full of panic novel is releasing for the series' 25th anniversary. So this might actually be a good time after we finish Love After World Domination to, to jump into Full Metal Panic. You guys game for that? Mm, yeah, I already really. rewatched season one. Well, actually, I guess I my actual answer is no, because it's way too goddamn long. For a watch club that we take like X weeks to do one season. It's what? Yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be like uh, you know, watch the first series and then maybe do something else. Come back. Uh, watch I wish, I, wish I had I switched the camera to you before earlier to try to like have this spasm. Shut up. So anyway, <laughs> back to this. When I when I first looked at this image of her. I thought that her hand was drawn by AI because it had this thing, and I realized that was her like dress flaps or whatever, like you know, coming off the back of her. Oh, outfit. you're talking about her mm. flaps, huh? Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> so the classic light novel series Full Metal Panic is getting an unexpected continuation in the form of a new volume that's being released in time for the series' 25th anniversary. So hold on, who voices the character? We need to cancel them for not being from Afghanistan. <gasps> Oh, uh, uh, Chris Patton. Oh. We don't want to cancel him. Time to pay the piper, Chris Patton. He, he's also not straight, so we got to cancel him double. Double oh. canceled. Improper use of penis. <laughs> oh. I, I did not need to know that. Wait, wasn't he the guy that was like Monica's ex? No, that was Illich Guardiola. No, but uh, another I mean, ex. That I'm talking about the non half the that was That one explains why he turned gay. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what I mean. Like, wasn't that brought up that people brought something up like that? Anyway, yeah, I think you might be right. Um, while the main series straddles the genre of mecha fights and a bodyguard romance plot, the continuation novel, A Slice of Life, Fumofu, is set twenty no, okay, something else. Uh, is set twenty years after the ending of the main series, with main couple Sosuke Sagra and Konami Chiri. No, wow. no, white haired girls basket. No, that's all right. Uh, wow. Chiri, now a married couple. The first chapter will be serialized on May nineteenth in Dragon Magazine Japan. The main duo's visuals have been shown off. So he's twenty well, I'm years glad we older. Spoiled huh? that. Sure. 
sure looks <laughs> oh no she lost all of her charm good lady. she lost all of her character <laughs> design uh a release date for the full novel has not yet been announced do you think they'll do an anime on it she's it legal to be off to now oh, oh no <laughs> jesus christ all right anyway okay titan comics announces a robotech rick hunter comic book series and i know what you're thinking Yan, who fucking cares? Why are we covering this? How could they deface them? It's a holy fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> could you make either of them look any more unappealing? <laughs> holy shit. That's how you know it's Robotech and not Macross. Mm. Lynn Minmay. Looks so fucking bad. What what was that you said, uh, Reese? Um, uh, she has a very solid jawline. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, is there an Adam's you, apple in last there? Night, yeah, he asked if there was an Adam's apple, and I was like, share an apple, which is a reference only Macross fans will get, and I'll just move on. You can groan silently. You don't need to tell me how awful I am in the joke. All right, cool. Moving on. Uh, let's go ahead and address very important developments. First of all, stop the presses because they're going to be stopped for a while, buddy. Capcom. <laughs> <laughs> no, the presses are going through. No! Stretch out your statement longer. Cap Capcom ah. has Gone the opposite direction of the Atelier Riza crowd and, and gave uh, liposuction <laughs> to <two>. Chun Li's <laughs> thighs. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> Jesus Christ, they're huge. Yes. What an unhealthy beauty standard. <laughs> you know how we covered that the, the Street the Fighter's created. live action movie rights were just acquired by Legendary or whatever? Oh. Coming this fall, Street Fighter starring Lizzo as Chun Li. <laughs> oh, no. oh, God. <laughs> I saw a, uh, what is it? Um, a video that's like the optimal character design so it had the custom creator character and he looked mm -hmm. unbelievably retarded and uh what is it the tutorial guy that's like your trainer guy he has like popeye arms i'm like what is with these stupid character designs hmm. so anyway there you go <laughs> danny I'm trying to say hi, but the internet is so slow. There you are. Hey, uh, I'm <laughs> going to encourage you to go and sign this petition to the following link and sign a petition for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Danny. <laughs> All right. Oh, Rumor: Disney and Square so Enix. Nobody can see. <laughs> Disney and Square Enix are working on a Smash Bros. inspired game called Disney Domination. Disney Dominatrix. It just seemed like the appropriate <clears throat> podcast to cover it, so we threw it in there. Hmm. It says here Disney has apparently teamed up with Square Enix. Oh, they've never worked on games before to develop a new Smash Bros. inspired video game, which is called Disney Domination. The roster reportedly features up to 55 characters at launch, spanning multiple Disney franchises, which are spread across a single-player campaign that features 60 stages. Disney Domination has apparently been in development since 2018 and started, a pa started as a passion project, but has swelled with uh, a reported team of 240 developers. The launch window for Disney Domination is the second half of 2024. It should be noted that this is just a rumor, and neither companies have announced the project. But they go on to say Disney Domination will feature up to 55 characters at launch, spread across a single-player campaign that features 60 stages. There will be so many online modes, including 12-player online battles, 
voice chat battles, Disney Dominion missions, and more. <laughs> voice I like the chat idea. Battles. I like the idea that you're fighting in these stages, and the song playing is under the sea. You know, it's just like. <laughs> it's just like... Can Can I play as like a <laughs> mini mouse beating? Oh up, my god! Uh, you know, like <laughs> cloud. You know in. Uh, uh, you know, in like uh, Smash Bros, how there's the alternate skin color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're oh, gonna get no, black the race. and white and white. Um, Ariel. Ariel, Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> Which is somehow gonna traverse. She's gonna be like flopping on her flipper on land. <laughs> oh yeah. Like you can't. <laughs> she shot the black one. You can't. You like. That's she funny. takes water damage because she can't swim. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be an Unreal Engine 5, they're saying. All right. After Pink News declares the villain a queer icon, Resident Evil Village lead writer Anthony Johnston confirms Lady Dimitrescu is a lesbian. On what basis? There wasn't even, like, any, like, interest in the game of, like, any orientation. Like yeah, so, they're just retconning uh, it to the, be the, like, the look big, how the, progressive we are. The biggest yeah. sell was your Fudinari ones. <laughs> yeah, I was, gonna, I, was gonna say, I was gonna say, I think we all know Lady Dimitrescu is packing. <laughs> yeah, is that is that why she has three daughters? Because she was a lesbian? Yep. That explains it. In response to a recent reading of the game's villainous Lady Dimitrescu as a sexually ambiguous queer icon. The lead writer for Capcom's Resident Evil Village has confirmed that, at at least as far as he's concerned, the giantess vampire is actually an outright lesbian. Well, I'm about I to mean, make a statement that has equal validity, which is it that- does make sure it does it does make sense that vampire women would be lesbians since they get the monthly stream of fresh. Uh, oh blood. no, <laughs> fresh sacrifice. <laughs> so uh is it really so here, fresh though just uh, fresh arguable. nourishment every month from each other <laughs> so with, without having without the, it's the cycle of life <laughs> now now the statement i'm gonna make is that brad the anime collector is a queer icon <laughs> like you know it's you true. just are yeah. i mean he is the cock collector like, look, I, I'm just using this, this good, dude's logic. This is a good cover for my for my serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good place to be. Greenline wishes he was here right now. <laughs> this could have been you, buddy. <laughs> Stupid word. All right. So on April 25th, in honor of Lesbian Visibility Week, that's a thing. Doesn't take are they it. are they it's normally invisible? Yet. Are we gonna have a a week dedicated to the people who have one nipple that's a different color? Visibility yeah, week this week. <laughs> <laughs> Heter what do you call it? Uh, uh, nippleochromia disorder. <laughs> <laughs> Show me a visibility week and just watch all the topless women. I was like, wait a minute, which one is the word that has to do with the color? Fuck. All right, anyway, so in honor of Lesbian Visibility Week, the LGBT uh, centric news outlet Pink News published an article profiling nine iconic video game lesbians who literally changed the game. Let's see, that one from Ratchet and Clank or whatever. <laughs> like, no, oh, no. Um, The one who's ratchet as fuck. (laughs) (laughs) While women make up around half of gamers, they've long been underrepresented and forced to deal with sexist and misogynistic plots with sapphic representation even harder to find. The news, uh, the outlet's Amelia Hansford prefaced her piece, quote, but things change to mark a lesbian visibility week something we just made up right like here are just a few of the amazingly written and memorable lesbian characters across gaming tell me tell me all of them providing a brief rundown of each of her nine oh there's aloy there's uh uh not abby what's her name uh 
Last of Us girl. Ellie. Ellie. Ellen Page. Own it. Or whatever. The Last of Us is. is Ellie. Disco Elysium's Ruby. The Instigator. Monmist Vivian Pentria, Pentriate. Cyberpunk Precision's Judy <laughs> Alvarez. Overwatch's Tracer. I thought she was by. Who even knows? Mass Effect's Commander Shepard, admittedly a reach, as Shepard is entirely a player avatar, a choice. not an individual character. Signalis' Elster, League of Legends' Renata Glask, and Undertale's Undine. Hansford eventually closed out her piece by giving an honorable mention to the matriarch of the eponymous castle, Dimitrescu. Wow. This sounds like this sounds like this article was originally submitted as uh, characters I wish were lesbian that I could go have sex with. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while her sexuality is never fully clarified, Resident Evil Village's Alcina Dimitrescu, I assume that's how you pronounce it, has become something of a queer icon in her own right, she asserted. Quote, the nine-foot-tall vampire aristocrat gained a huge amount of attention following her introduction in the teaser trailer of the 2021 survival horror game. And let's face it, you don't get called mother that many times without having energy. Sounds like you don't get called mother unless you fuck a dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, I just, I'm not buying, I'm not following the logic trail. You're, you have to fight her here. three daughters. Hmm. I gotta look up this term relating to sexual attraction or activity between women. All right, do your worst, queer icon, the anime collector. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. You said you were gonna Extra? look it up. I did. It was on screen. <laughs> well, I'm not looking because I'm resting my eyes. Well, you were <laughs> supposed to leave ages ago. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Go sign that <laughs> petition, you bitch. <laughs> so, <laughs> excerpts from her various books and diaries suggest that he has a little romantic interest in men and talks about the women in her life as though they are Greek statues. No matter her true sexuality... Dimitrescu is worth a mention because she will forever be the tall vampire lady that we queers truly need. Whatever that means. There is a lot going on in the queer community. If <laughs> Dude, that's like saying, oh my god. This... tall lesbian! <laughs> no, 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 no. Dude, that's like saying there's this serial killer but she's a lesbian. Oh my god, she's the serial killer we need. <laughs> this is a district... Jeffrey Dahmer's the gay icon we need. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> Whew, okay. Uh, however, this ambiguity regarding Lady Dimitrescu's sexuality would soon be put to rest by Resident Evil Village lead writer Anthony or Anthony Johnston. A storied author whose past works include the original Dead Space, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, the original graphic novel The Coldest City, which has since been adapted to silver screen as Atomic Blonde. Mm. Ooh. Johnson took to his personal Instagram roughly a week after the publication of, the Hans of Hansford's article to declare, I cannot speak for everyone else at Capcom, obviously. But as far as I'm concerned, your head canon is true. Well, uh, I'm concerned the only wait no, as, but as far as I'm concerned, the only thing about men that makes Lady D horny is their blood. <laughs> Yikes! Hmm. Yikes! He said that, that in the most yike. cringe way. <laughs> as of writing, Capcom has not officially weighed in on the canonicity of Johnson's post-release revelation. Well, there you go. So they're warm-blooded, basically. Mm. It would be worse. It would be. It could be worse. She could have a twelve-inch Las Plaga stick. 
I mean, yeah, that's a little bit on the extreme uh, uh, hentai route of oh no. Of course, a, or worse, a spider vagina like the anime Wicked City. Oh God! Uh, remind me of that. I'm sure Rule Thirty Four of that exists somewhere. Well, there is a not yep. safe for work channel in the Discord. You can help yourself to. <laughs> 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 All right. Hmm. Oh boy, why did I open up that right stuff tab when that's your job? <laughs> All right, folks, definitely need that uh, Patreon money because I need to find a new place to live with more accessible router boxes. <laughs> All right, so Dark Horse <laughs> is going to be releasing the Trigun manga in deluxe hardcover editions. Which and means yes. they'll paint over every frame of Bash with his new edgy design. No, which no. means, <laughs> yes, they are blurry. going to be this color. Yeah, with the metallic blue titles. Doesn't it just seem like they're trying super hard to come up with something? And they're like, ah, put the gun on it, I guess. That's yeah. the iconic thing from Trigun. You know, you know the Berserk gun with has- Try. Berserk has this like the symbol the brand of on it, the brand. Um, Helsing has like the cross. What's Trigun got? Not a donut. Put a gun on there. You know, like, not, his not that cat or his goggles. Not the cat know? in every single episode. Put the gun up there. <laughs> but only like, <laughs> like putting a donut on it. People are like, oh, it's just a Simpsons. <laughs> it's a yellow. <laughs> Yeah, and then of course it's yellow. Like Ooh, that's gonna look great. Mm, it, how many of these are there gonna be? Uh, one for Trigun, and then five for Trigun Maximum. So six thick ass books, big chunk it, it of does, yellow in your bookshelf. That's gonna look fantastic. It does have a Simpsons vibe because the blue. Remember, Marge Simpson's hair is blue. Mm, it's true. In um, other news. Uh, all items are now eligible for free shipping at Right Stuff. What? What Good am news, I missing everyone. Here? We've expanded free shipping to all items. Yes, even figures. Especially figures. So go ahead and pre-order them with your next manga and anime haul. So previously, the reason they couldn't, they couldn't give you uh, free shipping on figures uh, is because they have to pack them differently. Right. In order for them to be safely transported, they have to do it differently. So now, well, actually, because they can't pass it off as media mail, and it's more true. Expensive that's to probably ship the other mail. the other reason. Um, so now, I guess that's not a concern anymore. And well, to quote Green Line, don't get figures on right stuff because it takes <laughs> literal years after you've pre-ordered it. Reese, here's what I'm going to do. Oh, how many are already... these? How many are there? Uh, let me open all 25 of them. Okay, right so now. I'm going to split for just a second. And and while I'm split, I'm going to open up all the rest of the tabs for the night so that we're good to go, all right? So you okay. go ahead. I'm, I'm going to leave. How about um, you just uh, uh, grab one of the Dragon Ball Z releases yeah. and say, yeah, you know the drill. Hey, on one second. It's, it's uh, not giving me the option to screen share just yet for this other window. Your screen. Give me a second. Technical difficulties. I know I can fix it. There it is. Oh, wow. There we go. All right. So they are re releasing Sailor Moon S, which is season three. So I this believe. means we actually have the entirety with better masters now because these are improved masters from the Blu rays I got. Mm. So I can. I can eat a dick, apparently, but I'm glad that I have the option to get it because they could have just not re-released it and give us. God, you're getting the option is it to the, eat a is dick. It the original? Is it the yeah. original dub with it, or is it just the no? One? no. Well, it's no, a new the, one. The, because... the, the DIC dub is not with any of these at all. No, they couldn't because it's cut. You know, they made a new dub because they could make it uncut that way. 
And also, they didn't even dub the full series, which they re they released the full series, all AKA, five seasons. AKA, mm -hmm. they don't want to pay Deke the money or Cookie Jar or whatever to get. I think there's many other reasons. Like, even Greenline, who just watched, like, a Deke dub of season one and two, says the dub is awful. So, like. <laughs> no. That's true. But all the, like, I remember, like, even, you know, Dragon Ball Z, the first, like, dub for Funimation, the in-house dub, that was terrible. I mm. mean, hindsight 2020, like, I thought that was great back then. I rewatched it. I'm Goku. I'm a sand from Earth. So, like, this comes out in July. You know, shit happens. And now we got Crunchyroll's releases. So, uh, Children's Summoner. Also, to note that uh, they have raised the prices across the board on uh, Crunchyroll stuff. So this normally would have been like sixty four ninety nine. It's now sixty nine ninety eight. Oh my so, god! I, I came back to the to your Trojan song. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyway, <laughs> I, I literally. Uh, Clicked the button to leave as you're saying, wait, don't go. <laughs> wait. <laughs> right. uh, uh, right, I will so, uh, shush my face. Continue. What One Piece Collection 32 DVD Blu-ray combo pack. Seb says Fudnam sounds like he's using a free headset from 2002. Uh, that might have been King Style. No, th the thing is that Fudnam is uh, such a beta bitch that he's lying in bed with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sleeping with the podcast. Uh, sleeping around with the podcast. Yeah. Uh, One Piece season thirteen part two. So, uh, Bang yeah, the podcast. That's a, that's a thing. Seven. Oh, I gotta days. remind everybody to rape that like button, please. Yeah. Yes. Don't ask it consent. <laughs> <laughs> Par Parallel World Pharmacy also coming out. If somebody yeah. else could full screen that, since it's clearly not working for me, I would love that. <laughs> Yay. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. It's full screen now. Oh, I got best girl on the cover. Oh, so you've seen it. Got Ranking of Kings, Season 1, Part 2, friggin' finally. Part 1 came out October of last year. It should have had this in January. So this is episodes 12 to 23. And then we've got the LE for part two. Which looks remarkably similar to some of their other releases. And I hate the window boxing, but I'll live. I'll get it anyway. Yeah. They, they don't have uh, pictures on right stuff, but they do have pictures on Crunchyroll with the all the crap that comes with it. It's got like a 152 page art book. Uh, four art cards, an uh, embroidered patch of Kage, and uh, yeah. To the yep. 16 people currently watching on Rumble, I'm just going to go ahead and post the link to the petition. There's 16, <laughs> wait, there's 16 people viewing live on Rumble? That's, that's what it says on Rumble. Dude, Dude, this Rumble gig is working. If somebody right. put the intro to Reckoning, uh, Ranking of King, yeah. right, with Fighting Gold from Part 5 of JoJo, it'd probably sound more epic. <laughs> so we so got, Somebody should do we, that. We do oh, have God. people commenting in the thing, but I can't see the... They don't oh. integrate into StreamYard, unfortunately. That's, that's yeah. Fun. We gotta get StreamYard to fix that. Yeah. Uh, a Couple of Cuckoos, Season 1, Part 1. So am I the only one that didn't actually know the spelling of cuckoos and read it as cuckoos the whole time? <laughs> yes. You would. A couple of cucks, season one. <laughs> <laughs> the new hit CW drama. <laughs> Come on. Why, why do they have a you, U you're and a, two O's? You're a, couple, as... you're a couple of seasons too late. Giga Gertie made that joke. <laughs> oh, God, damn it. Uh, Brave Father Online, Holy our story shit. of Final Fantasy 14. My computer is 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, Damn. That's Celsius. hotter than my dick. Okay. <laughs> Not I'm going to turn it to turbo fan. <laughs> okay, good. Brave Final Father Online. 
Yeah. So, um, um, hey, you got to say the DC final. AC. Right? Speaking, speaking of fans, uh, they should make a sequel to this where they bond over their OnlyFans simping. <laughs> well, so we talked about this a while ago, like maybe like 2018. Um, there, it's a series about um, a father and son who bond over over playing uh, Final Fantasy Online. So this right? is a film, not a series. I think I, I like how they have the dad on the spine. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm glad it's getting a physical release. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Who is releasing that, by the way? Crunchy Kids. Crunchy Roll. Crunch. Yeah. Shadow's Shadow House. House season season Wait, two? who's Crunchy Kids? <laughs> who's that? AC. <laughs> Crunchy Kids is, is what a, the kid. Is the, that a spit the, on? The Crunchy Kids is the uh, cannibals cereal. I thought that was a spinoff of Crunchyroll slash Funimation Sony Venture. Oh, it's Crunchy yeah. Kids. It's going to be for Shin Chan and the other kitty stuff. Yeah, they're, they're, never gonna gonna they're never going to Shin Chan. They're never going to touch the kitty stuff. <laughs> they're not going to touch Shin Chan ever again. Detective never. Conan. There you go. Uh, except for Discotech, because they like not the, really a the kid's obscure. property. But, <laughs> right? Right? Think, but normal normal people wouldn't know that though, right? They just look at the art style for Detective Conan and, and Shin Chan. They're like, "Well, oh, those are little kids. It's a kids show, right? It must be." Yeah, Except much. Shin Chan looks like crap, and Detective Conan doesn't. Ooh, fighting words. I mean, when I was when I saw the trailers for Detective Conan, I thought this art style looks awful. Kill me, please. Is it so, worse? Is it better than, or is it worse than uh, Shin Chan's art style? No, but you're comparing like dog crap to like <laughs> uh, uh, horse crap. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I don't consider horse crap is at least horse useful. crap. But you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, Rising Shield Hero season two. So this is the standard edition. Mm, and then there's the Make limited point. edition. Hooray! Does it look like the limited edition for the? Uh... It does. Nice. It even comes with a tapestry. Pee pee pig. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe maybe pee pee not like so big. Five months. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I was looking you, at a different window. <laughs> do you do you retract your PP status? <laughs> PP inverted. <laughs> that sounds homophobic of you, just because I'm a queer icon. <laughs> <laughs> queer icon. Uh, uh, at least him being attracted to children is on brand for his queer icon status. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. <laughs> So they're re-releasing all the Dragon Ball Z 16 by 9 sets, apparently without Except, slip covers. Yeah, but it's and the with same crunchy thing. branding. Yeah, and crunchy well, branding. Well, yeah, now. they need. They probably want to spread the correct brand and cut costs on the slip covers. So yeah, yeah because wasn't this like um the 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 failed. A uh, Blu-ray one where they in, in for no. 2016. No, no. These, are, these are not the level sets. These are the 16 by 9 sets. No, we, we, if we were only so lucky to have had the level sets fully released. Yeah, yeah. because they they re and it was it looked really good, and then it got canceled due to low sell because you know they oversaturated the market with so many fucking DVD slash Blu-rays, well, including I think they Ty. Failed because they were only releasing 17 episodes per set. That's why yeah. You think it should have they been also 20? didn't market it very well because I didn't even know it was a thing until well after season it was season one was, season one was thirty nine episodes for perspective. Okay, you know, hmm. and it's and to make things clear, they they released those four by three sets, which is a completely different remastering, which also had a plethora of issues. And you'd think that they'd release those, you know, because what what else are you going to do with them? But no. Apparently, but these still hold up. These are well. still widely available and for the same price. So it's not like they're they're cheaper or anything. You're saying the same price for something without a slipcover. Well, yeah, it's the same price because they can get slightly more profit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they can get away with this shit because they're the biggest dogs in town, more so ever now. 
I mean, they're not really getting away with it. Like, people who have it already have it, and they're not going to buy it again. No, but y- you know what I mean. Like they, they're not going to lower the price because they're they're crunchy roll. They don't care to. They're not gonna. Lance would be like, "These stuff should be three dollars." I would. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <three laughs> bucks. Uh, I I would not defense, make yeah. it three. I'd probably make it between you know twenty five and thirty bucks. Uh, so anyway, Mobile Suit Gundam, Twilight Access Powers. I mean, Twilight Access uh, re- Remain the Dawn. I'm stoked Red. to see more Gundam Remain suddenly pop up. When I see uh, this, this, it looks just, like the crossover you, between the Twilight Zone and Gundam. That this is only 27, epi- 27 minutes. I know, but the, pro- the the thing is, now I can get more. I can have a more complete Gundam For set. 20 bucks, and then we've got uh, the, Gundam. This one I'm looking the most forward to. Mobile Suit Gundam Sen. And this is yeah, it has all minutes. it has all the cast, like uh, the OG cast. Episodes one of nineteen, one to nineteen. All of these are not dubbed, by the way. These are all Japanese only. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't care. Gun I, I still want it. Sue me. Gun Club Gun Builders beginning of G or beginning G. I don't know. It's all about minutes. that G. And then speaking of figures here, you can look at Hana or Suki Uzaki, you know, Mama Uzaki. Damn. Nice. Or as they pronounce it in the dub Uzaki. Oh. Yeah, don't worry. I KMS too. Make sure that you uh make sure that you send that in uh like so I can add these non normal right stuff. <laughs> Things to the. <laughs> I just isn't, isn't, that, just for the isn't that kind of funny? They they got rid of all the hentai slash etchy stuff from their thing. Yet they can keep this shit in there. Well, there's like nothing explicit about it. Book. Yeah. Hmm. So also, this is free shipping. <laughs> <laughs> if you spend more than yeah yeah yes. Yes. Um, imagine you're, um, you're definitely just, spending more than fifty dollars. I see it. I'm, I'm imagine going it. to the post office and the people look through like a like one of those um, see through scanner, like you know, like they just X ray. The X ray <laughs> scanners are like, what the hell? Oh my god, who the fuck would buy this shit? I would. Can you imagine AC's postmaster <laughs> scanning all those dragon dildos? <laughs> yeah, like how dare you? I am a queer icon. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Dude, for a second I thought that was, I thought that was Jared Fogel. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was Jared Fogel. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'm sending no. the sneaky Zaki uh link in the uh StreamYard private chat. Cool. Hey, uh, random eleven. Can you can you paste this ugly mug as the uh, thing that shows up on the uh, petition when you share the link instead of the product? Thanks. What? When you share the link, the, the the preview link when you share it someplace, it does the the boxer product. Really? Yeah. Oh. When I shared it, it it the link you know like thumbnail. Yeah, the, yeah. Thumbnail the box is a box product instead of his, and, instead of his face. Instead of this beautiful mug. <laughs> Weird. I'll look at it. Yeah. Can we put that beautiful mug on a mug? <laughs> we do have the rights. <laughs> onto onto another mug. So it's like a picture of a mug with his mug on it on a giant. Mug. <laughs> So uh, that Satoshi Kone um, documentary series that they've spent like 14 years on uh, has got a physical release in Taiwan. Uh, It's in English, Japanese, and French with subtitles also in English and traditional Chinese. So if you were interested in seeing that documentary, um, there is at very minimum a Taiwanese Blu-ray. There's probably also going to be a French Blu-ray because I'm pretty sure... Blu-ray. I'm Blue pretty sure that uh, row, it was a guys. French documentary. So um, hopefully we get so it over here. I'm kind of. I think G Kids might release it over here. But just if you wanted it and didn't didn't have any faith, 
Seb says well, there is a French Blu-ray, so there you well, go. Reese Company, you know, G Reese Kids. Stuff. It's all good. Yeah, Reese stuff, <laughs> too. Reese the stuff G. international. Yeah. So also, if you guys would like <laughs> to support... More stuff because I'm so into <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to grow up. I'm a Reese. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay. I don't think anyway. that was his choice. His body, but not his choice. Hey. I don't think you meant it that way, but fuck, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I can't grow up. I'm recently. <laughs> I'm gonna quit. <laughs> All right, so if you would like to further support this train wreck of a podcast, you can buy many amazing shirts over at StealthWeave.com. Yeah, that came out wrong, but, you know, it's too late. I came out out wrong. Shut up. (laughs) I came out wrong. wrong. (laughs) Uh... All right, and then, of course, we've got all the new merch at Cringe for for Cringe.org at OCPodcast.com slash store. So if you needed to show people that you are in solidarity with the current thing. You can get the soy <laughs> wax candle. You can get a set of five pin buttons. You can get boxer briefs. I forgot what I wrote for these. Are they funny? No, probably not. <laughs> All you're missing is a giant dragon one. You know, dragon. Yeah. Accessory. And we can't. Not to be confused with change.org, although equally effective, cringe.org features only the most urgent online petition. Show your support for societal change by drinking the rage tears of the week from this cringe.org. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I wrote that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Also, uh, there is a massive variation new Pikachu ply- plushie line that lets you find the perfect Pikachu just for you. So they come in, they come in male and female tails. They have, they have three different sizes, the ears, eyes, mouth, hands, and arms, tail and size are all, uh, randomly variations of, of all of them. Right. Can I get the fat Pikachu one? Right. The you series? just like, <laughs> I can't not. Yeah. The one from the original card yeah, with the yeah. black tip <laughs> of the tail, the black tip at, at the end. Oh, is that? Is that where I've got that memory of black tip on the end of the tail? I remember that. Like, I don't know why some people say that never happened, but I swear as a kid, I even had like merchandise that had the black tip at it at the end of the tail. Cause he just has the brown at the base, right? Cause he's yeah. actually just shitting out but, his tail. Yeah, but it had a black <laughs> tip on it. And now everybody's like, that never happened. And I'm like, I had merchandise with it on it. Yeah. Weird. Whatever. That's the you've got the circumcised Pikachu. (laughs) (laughs) Also, is this the rudest parfait in all of Japan? So rude. Prohibited parfait brings new meaning to nude food. Japanese parfaits are famous for being beautifully designed with careful attention to detail often looking like works of art that are perfect for photography uh, for photographing and sharing on Instagram over in Nagasaki. However, there's a store selling parfaits that might need a bit, a bit of censoring before sharing online because well, they contain nudity. The, (laughs) the parfaits are being sold at Olympic, a long established cafe that sells Nagasaki specialties. Naga Avert Naga your Naga eyes. Naga wink, wink. Avert thy virgin eyes. So the parfaits. Uh, I don't know. We're not even going to bother to read it. We'll just see it. So the prohibited parfait and the ultimate parfait, which have been pixelated for your virgin eyes, <coughs> because <laughs> the cream. Oh, that one's <laughs> because... dripping. <laughs> I, I love like ah this that one's not head. so pixelated. <laughs> yeah, it isn't. You know, it reminds me. Remember the Mad TV skit where they pixelated the dude's hair, and it's like, oh, your your hair is so sexy, we can't show it on TV. No, That's I don't remember that. <laughs> that. No, it's hilarious. Oh, I need to know what the name of the video was, but it was uh, hilarious. 
they should do that's the joke oh man this ice cream so so sexually explicit that we can't even show it on the advertisement at the pixel and it's not that bad yeah now i'm gonna i'm i don't mean to blue ball you after seeing the the parfait <laughs> 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 Let me help you. Shinobi Master Sen Shenron Kagura Yozakura Stunning in Skimpy Nurse Getup. Mm. Zing. Wow. As I'm looking, I'm like, it feels like she's missing something. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's what's supposed to go there. Vavoom. And Sony didn't want this. What? It's a good thing there's a hole in her shirt. She might have torn it. <laughs> like, Anyway, there you go. Green line couldn't be here. Footnote's no, no, already halfway no, if, there. No, if, so, if Sony got the, like, <laughs> the whole the whole uh, figure would be painted over to make it look like it's a long dress. <laughs> Literal breastplate will give you a cosplay ready anime class bust in seconds. What the hell? Fun. I can be. The podcast, please. And then we'll all wear these. I need to, to be the queer icon to make videos <laughs> undercover. All right, so it's sort of a dis it's sort of disheartening to think that you can spend countless hours and huge sums of cash working on your cosplay creation, getting the outfit looking just like it does in the original work, yet still end up looking nothing like the character you've been trying to emulate. That's because many iconic anime and video game figures have iconic figures themselves with physiques that often range from difficult to impossible to replicate in real life. Leading anime ladies, for example, tend to be rather booksum. But if your DNA didn't deem D cup would be your natural <laughs> bus size, one designer has come up with a silicone free solution a literal breastplate. Oh, I was like, where did I leave off? Okay. Twitter user Namechiro, sorry, Namechiru is the mammary minded cosplayer behind <laughs> this unusual item. At first so, glance, that... <laughs> no, I was going to say, so basically she was flat chested. So we can yes. all agree with that. She was flat as a board. She's she's trans <laughs> I identify as having D cups. Uh, at first glance, you might be you might be tempted to pass it slash them off as being strictly for lonely male otaku, while internally <laughs> debating whether it's more or less creepy than a naked anime girl huggy pillow. On the other hand. I mean, you should attach this to the huggy pillow, if you ask me. <laughs> mm. On the other hand, um, on the other hand, there's no school. Put the huggy with... pillow over it. Yes, that's what I'm saying. On the oh, other hand, there's no school. Sorry, right. yeah. you could attach it to the inside. <laughs> on the other hand, there's no schoolgirl with a worried expression, or the on the other, there's no head either. <laughs> <laughs> Namechiru, though, is earnestly presenting the strap on breasts <laughs> as a legitimate piece of cosplay paraphernalia for women, with the following description of its benefits Quote, You don't have to mash your breasts together or even show much of your own actual cleavage. It's a comfortable cosplay item that helps you change <clears throat> that helps you change you into the character you want to be. No more being ashamed of tiny breasts. Uh, the designer sort of has a point about the fake breast being a, a more modest alternative than getting half naked. For example, here's Kill the Kill's Ryuko. <clears throat> One of the more popular cosplay choices these days. Being portrayed using Namichiru's breastplate. Until the designer gives us a better term, that's what we're calling it. Oh, okay. Ordinarily, the cosplayer would have uh, would have to be on guard against the dual concerns of catching a cold or slipping a nipple, <laughs> but Namichiru's creation keeps the anime fan covered uh, covered up and warm, made of cloth with straps that loop behind the neck and around the trunk of the body. 
The item is essentially a bikini top or sports bra with built-in breasts. Namichiru estimates the approximate cup size to be an E or G. Mm. Not I, an I, F, I, though. <laughs> I picture, look, you remember the, the Pokemon Beat episode? This is James's outfit. Basically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what I come up with. Like, man, I'm like, oh, no. My first thought, <laughs> when I got guys <laughs> talking as James now. Oh, no. So it's far, uh, uh, number sure estimates the approximate cup size to be an E or G far above the national average in Japan. I gotta know. <laughs> <laughs> Do it for science. <laughs> a cup average in Saitama, B, B and C look like the average, I guess. I don't know. Disappointing data. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so anyway, um, <clears throat> Uh, originally, Namachiru offered four sets on a first-come, first-served basis for a piece of Who will 12... come first? I'm oh, sorry, for a, <laughs> for a price of $102 each. Ooh. That batch was gone in a flash, and while Namachiru is mulling over whether or not to make another, there is still a way to get your hands on these fake breasts. And no, <laughs> we're not suggesting you ask if you can cop a feel. Oh. Now, Machu will randomly select one Twitter follower or user who retweets about the breastplate to receive one free of charge. Although it's oh. not required, Namachiru has also requested the recipient try the item on and share a photo of the occasion. Oh, we, need, come on, we, we gotta get on there now. Okay, yeah, unfortunately, this article is from 2015. I just oh. happened to see it, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Oh yes. man, how, how you got my hopes up, and my day is ruined. <laughs> you got my dick up, and my day is ruined. <laughs> um, all right, so try them on to share a photo of the occasion, plus offer some feedback on its design. If this looks like something you'd like to add to your wardrobe, the tweet in question is directly below. Well, only 1.2k likes. <laughs> All right, anyway, so strap it on at your next anime convention, and you're sure to hear at least one person exclaim, Great Caesar's breasts! Okay. Especially if you're wearing the costume on the left. Okay. For sure. Right on. <laughs> or Tony the Tiger. It's not good. It's great. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna get away. Okay. Get away. I, I have to go to the upload thing, right? Yes. Streamyard.com slash upload. All right. See ya, hoes. You're missing out. Sexy Japanese personal trainer promising testosterone building workouts. Well, I trust <laughs> you will have our queer <laughs> ideologies represented <laughs> adequately when covering this. Damn it. A sexy Japanese personal trainer named Noko has begun to advertise her new workout sessions for men that include a lot of healthy gazes at her in order to help build testosterone. Look, any Chojin can watch porn while they pump fire. <laughs> we don't need this lady. <laughs> That's true, but you can't physically be near her, though. The video, you know, the video is like, yeah, it's there. You're, when you're spotting him like that, that's like lame. <laughs> According to her Twitter profile, she specializes in supporting workout routines. Yeah, by, by lifting it up while he's doing just fine. What's wrong with you? <laughs> supporting workout routines that, while that, raising that's testosterone. That's like having the opposite effect. You need a right? lady to Like help she's you. making a beta bitch. <laughs> uh, while well, raising I testosterone. For... Here, let me help you. This is <laughs> for like a people plot who... to like manga slash anime series like this weak weak guy it's like i have to go to the gym all the guys are rejecting me to be trained by them because i'm so weak and then this chick is a fitness chick nason will you teach me <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just like you gotta eat this you gotta taste pump some iron so yeah, they uh, according to her Twitter profile, she specializes in supporting workout routines, which 
while rising testosterone for people who want gains and want to become more popular than they are now. I need to see the test results that show the increase in testosterone over time taking this class. <laughs> a video she posted of her assisting someone lifting weights gave her a surge in popularity, reaching 2.7 million views in just a day and a half. How is Japan the most perverted place in the world? And yet this is like viral worthy. <laughs> yeah. That said, her training won't come cheap. A trial less, uh, uh, it's 10,500 10, yen for a trial lesson or 758, seven, 75, 80 in US dollars. The amount of strokes I've had tonight is just uh, indicative of my vaccine stats. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Our lonely reporter goes searching for Japan's search for a spouse vending machine. Single once again, Seiji goes looking for love in a can. What do you guys think? So basically Japan is so... Like their birth rate is in such dire straits that they have, they have a um. No oh, shit, a that guy looks machine. like he looks like Masako Mazawa. Fuck, I wonder why he's not getting some poontang. Does he? Yeah, he looks a little bit, you know, like a younger Masako Mazawa when she was in her maybe forties or thirties when she voiced. <laughs> Goku in the original Dragon Ball. Yeah, in the, in the 80s, <laughs> the early 80s. I'm not seeing it. Just <laughs> I, I think I think the mustache that's quite a that's quite a <laughs> that's quite a racist statement from you, Kingston. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so anyway, um, so so they're they're so uh, hard up for uh, for repopulation that they have this vending machine. Where people post their like Tinder profile writings, you know, like like their uh, their sales pitch. Yeah, I'm a 32 year old virgin and I'm ready to mingle. <laughs> Only costs a thousand yen. Why is that in there? <laughs> Wait a minute, oh, I gotta God. read this out. <laughs> <laughs> From out on the street, it's actually a little hard to spot since the vending machines on either side of the entrance to this uh, to the space just sell ordinary drinks. It's right here in the back. Uh, tucked in the back, though, is this pink vending machine operated by a company called Matching Advisor Press. Map. That's an unfortunate title. Are these mm. kids really 30? <laughs> the top row is stocked with cans and bottles of coffee, tea, and soda. The second and third rows, though, each of those pink cans corresponds to a single woman who, just like Seiji, is looking for love. They're all identically priced at a thousand yen or seven dollars and forty cents and list the woman's age. For example, the top can, the top cans in the photo below from left to right are a 27 year old woman, a 32 year old woman and you guessed it, a 35 year old woman. And don't worry, there are no tiny single ladies trapped inside these cans. Oh, thank goodness. Damn it. Dude, Matching Advisor be... Press is an OMI coordinator. The word OMI sometimes gets translated as arranged marriage, but it's really more of a matchmaking service for single people who are both looking for a serious relationship and hoping to get married in the not too distant future. Okay. So, to anybody out there, are, is, is a single person out there thinking that the women who have signed up for this aren't absolute zeros? Like not a not a two, like a zero. Like these, these are the back be, end of the. Sh these are all the back end of the short bus. These are the poor Ooh, man's that's zero. Bad. Like that is <laughs> like bad. When, when Reese says, "Hey, it, you it, never it, know." It's it bad. It's true. It's fucking maybe bad. maybe she's just really hot and she doesn't have a social life because she's like a software engineer. You know, like the South Park episode. Spoken where, like where a guy Jeff... who thinks the stripper has a crush on him. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> happens. It does. Trust me. Like, yeah, they, they love your that money. Happens. They, they have a crush on your wallet. Yeah, you're right. I like the idea that somebody just buys all of them, shows up to the date. <laughs> like every woman on the whole thing is there. 
Uh, it's just I'll a pod. Take, it's, you know it's what? Just, you it's just a go pod. <laughs> no, but a, you know what? Be, a pack you know of whales. What? It'd be like basically. <laughs> it'd be basically like remember the episode of South Park where Chef had to sell himself, right? And he's like, uh, let, let let's put this bag over your head. Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> so. And don't worry, uh, uh, when you purchase one of the cans, what you're actually doing is paying the consult consultation fee for an interview with matchmaking it with matching advisor press, where they'll show you a photo of the person who corresponds to the can and give you more information about them. That's an interesting idea. Like, what if Tinder didn't let you see the person until you matched with them? Hmm. Dude, that sounds like a like an American reality show or a Canadian reality show, like Love Is Blind or something. Wow, what an interesting concept for uh, for something that will never happen because the entire dating world, <laughs> based off of Tinder, is visual. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all bias. It's like, of course, mm. they you want to find somebody attractive. That's the point, right? Um, wow, mankind is going to be so sexy in some years. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna breed out all the uggos <laughs> yeah we're, unfortunately we're, 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 yeah. unfortunately all the brains are gonna go with them <laughs> yeah all the brains and ugly people are gonna go into like a like a you know basically like a special island only for themselves and everyone else is gonna be the attractive people is gonna be mostly in the big lands they're gonna be they're gonna have the special genes it's true it is, man. The smart so, people and ugly people will die out. They go on to say, they'll show you a photo of the person who corresponds to the can and give you information about them. Match ma matching Advisor Press's office is conveniently located on the second floor of the building. <laughs> They're, imagine actually supporting an entire business on this, right? <laughs> like... <laughs> There are also cans from men looking for love, which are in the white, which are the white ones in another vending machine in the space. Oh, yeah, but wouldn't it be messed up though? Like, you you get like the like, what if they they expect a woman to show up? It's actually the opposite. You know, no, but same seriously, gender. Think about right. this. This doesn't make any fucking sense like, to me. Like catfishing, you know what I mean? No, no, no. But it it just seems to me as though. The guys, why wouldn't the guys who put their thing here just pay for the girls? Oh, you mean oh, you mean like 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 a, you've like got the matchmaking thing going all wrong. You literally have your clients. You don't need this gimmick to get seven dollars. Come on, <laughs> just have them pay you to meet an equally ugly but also equally desperate person. You've got them right there. <laughs> That is true. I mean, that that's why the the you know the TV show The Matching Game existed. You put people so together. after your after your interview, if you and the cans person are both interested in each other, Matching Advisor Press will set up a face to face meeting for you. OMI sessions ordinarily involve drinks and light fare at a fancy restaurant or some sort of other classy venue. For an additional 15,000 yen, on the other hand, if after the interview you decide you'd rather not take things any further, they'll refund you the... I'm sorry. So you can pay them an additional 15,000 yen and they'll refund you the 1,000 yen? Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm scam. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I read that as part of the wrong sentence, the 15,000 for an additional 15,000 yen. It, see, so, cause there was this whole line of parenthetical things here. So they'll set up the face to face matchmaking for you for an additional 15,000 yen. But if you pay for the girl and go, wow, she's hideous. They'll give <laughs> you the thousand yen back. Wow. So win, win. You, I'm telling you, buy all of them. You get your veritable pick of the litter, right? You pick <laughs> the one that's the least unattractive. And then you get refunded all the others. Hmm. Scanning through the cans, Sagey saw the majority were from people in their 30s and 40s, but there were also ones 
from singles in their 20s and 50s. Oh. I, I wait with bated breath to find out which one he chooses. <laughs> Considering his preference for someone with a good deal of life experience, he figured he tries luck with a can from a 35-year-old woman. When he hit the button, he saw a red light shining in it, indicating that he that that the can had already been purchased. Oh. <laughs> Cock <Yeah>. blocked <laughs> technology. It'd be you hilarious. Pay first. Okay. Like imagine they, 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 you know, yeah. tease you with all the like 21 year old, 25 year old, and then you pay yeah. and you, they're like, all nope. blocked. And, and then you'll get like, your money back. Yeah. It's like, hey, we've got this 50 year old over here. Well, maybe I can yeah, get yeah. her. Uh, maybe she'll write me in her will or something. <laughs> yeah. She, she was really hot like 30 years ago, guys. She's sitting on a veritable fortune. Oh my yeah. God. So it's just your okay. old bag and you know, okay, died. Sage. You thought it wasn't like he was only interested in dating someone exactly 35 years old. He had no problem with someone a little older or younger, but the next can he wanted to buy had a red already sold light on its button, too. And so did the one after that. As a matter of fact, every single one was sold, not just the women either, the men's cans were entirely sold out, too. This apparently isn't a rare occurrence either. There's a pre-recorded message playing in the vending machine space, and it says the cans regularly sell out. How do they have a birth rate problem? I don't understand. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> is no, so no, no, no. eager. So, somebody's already doing your scheme and buying them all at once and just picking the best of the litter, and they, they don't have time to refill them every single day. So, so, so you're saying it's rigged, right? Yes. <laughs> It, it means that, like, so you get your thousand yen bullshit. back, but you had to make a choice. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not our fault that they you were too late, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, because the, the, it makes sense, it has to be super rigged because the low birth rates doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. You'd think this would work for that. So, it says here. Though this was Seiji's first trip to matching advisor presses vending machines, they've actually been in operation for a while. In a happy change from the rising prices of the current inflationary economy, though, the cans and associated matchmaking certs have gotten much more affordable. <laughs> For one thing, the cans used to cost 3,000 yen, three times as much as they do now. The bigger change, though, is that previously matching advisors... Matching advisor presses service contracts included a stipulation that if you and the person you were introduced to eventually did get married, you'd pay a 300,000 yen successful marriage award payment to them. Jesus, that's why their birth rate is so low. They self-sabotage the potential to get married by attaching a bill to it. Like you do that, and like, no, I don't want. Like, you you pass each other secret notes, like, you both know about this. And he's like, Yeah, I kind of do want to continue this, but not with this, with these guys. Like, you know, we're not satisfied, but then they actually just carry on and do actually get get hooked up and stuff. Yes, but with like, not with they're running, you know, they're, they have, there's like a warrant out for their arrest because they didn't pay their $300,000 get to be with each other fee. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, for one thing, the cans used to cost you that. Uh, that's not uncommon stipulation in the Oni in the Omi I sector sector of the matchmaking industry. But match matching advisor presses vending machines now say they levy no successful marriage award payment fees whatsoever. So it sounds like your potential expenses top out at 16,000 yen or 119 US dollars, which seems pretty reasonable if it turns out you meet the love of your life thanks to the camp. But I got to see these ladies, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> Seiji, trying to look on the bright side, was happy that apparently so many other people are making use of the cans as they search for their spouse. He just hopes that there's still someone out there... Uh, somewhere for him. Okay, well, I'm glad I skipped way ahead in that article. <laughs> Let's move on. Sadness kicks back in. <laughs> About 90% of experienced recruiters wouldn't hire balding applicants. 
you heard it here first, folks. Uh, I am about to be destitute. <laughs> I need your uh, support or else. I have been destitute for five years. Speaking on behalf of the bald committee on this podcast, we all could use your funding <laughs> to outpace these baldest uh, recruiters. <laughs> All right. So anyway, it appears that people who are bald are starting to or are starting to go bald have the biggest disadvantage in terms of finding work in Japan. As a recent survey found that a staggering 90 percent of experienced recruiters wouldn't hire balding applicants. A company specializing in thinning hair surveyed 341 adult men and women in their 20s to 60s to find out whether thinning hair influences the hiring process. The recruiters were shown AI-generated images of male applicants with the same features with normal hair and thinning hair. About 90% of the people in their teens to 30, sorry, in their teens to 30s 86% in their 40s, and 75% in their 50s tend to avoid applicants with thin hair. When asked if appearances influence the value they see in prospective employees, 49% very much agreed, and 44.3% agreed for a total of 93.3%. That's kind of like, they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot, though, with this study, because they gave them AI generated images of male applicants with the same features. So you're saying, does this guy, would you rather hire this guy with hair or without hair? Hmm. You know what I mean? When asked if appearances ever played a factor in hiring people of similar skill sets and experience, 85.9% admitted that it has and 14.1% lied. Uh, the third question was more straightforward and asked the recruiters how much it influenced them to hire applicants if they were balding. While only 1.8% said that it was a big influence, an additional 16.7% said that it didn't influence their decision for a total of 18.5% who admitted that the bald appearance would influence their hiring decision. Okay. I'm not sure how that math works. They said while only 1.8 said it, it was a big influence, an additional said it didn't influence. You add those together, you get this, right? Am I insane? Who admitted that the bald appearance would influence? Whatever. On the other hand, 31.1% said that it didn't doesn't influence that much. Blah, blah, blah. Lastly, a graph that shows much more likely how much more likely recruiters would hire an applicant with a normal set of hair compared to a balding applicant. It goes based on age groups of the applicants, but it's pretty apparent that most age groups would much rather hire an applicant with a full set of hair than a balding man. Baldies of the world unite. I just, it's... All right, I don't blame him. <laughs> Yikes. Okay. Comments from the report also indicate that it's it's likely much easier to land a job as a woman or LGBT than a balding man. Wow, really? Talk about that male privilege. That's why the trans rate is getting so high. <laughs> Because the bald men get to wear wigs and be okay. It was pretty obvious. All right. <laughs> Chinese man saves girl from suicidal jump, gets told to take responsibility. Oof. A case of prevented suicide turned tragedy in Jilin province in China recently, and it has become widely publicized. A 28 year old brave man caught a young girl jumping off a hospital balcony, only to end up hospitalized himself with the girl's mother angrily asking him to take responsibility. The man... Marry named, my daughter. <laughs> the man She's named too Kuyun, old. She's single. She has <laughs> mental problems. Marry her. Take responsibility. You saved her. You look after her now. She wasn't going to be a burden on me anymore. Now she, she has, will be. 
She has <laughs> crippling debt. You better take care. Yeah, of I haven't I haven't read this yet, but I I suspect that it's possible that they that the thing he has to take responsibility for is his own um medical the, bills. His own medical bills. Yeah. So the man named Ku Yan was working as a security guard at the hospital in twenty in twenty twenty two and rushed to the scene. When the suicide attempt was reported, only to find a crowd of onlookers not doing anything and rescue staff absent. Sounds like China. Ku Yan ran to the point of landing when the girl finally jumped and used his body as a cushion, only to pass out from the shock shortly after. He woke up with, with a broken neck, spinal and wrist injuries, and even one year on, he still had bouts of paralysis. On the other hand, the girl was successfully saved and discharged a few days after the incident with minor injuries. Ku wow. Yan, who found himself bedridden, was soon fired by his security company and could not pay the hospital's medical fees. The hospital made the decision to stop providing medicine, and Ku Yan's neighbor decided to ask the girl's family if they could provide financial support for his recovery, only to be shouted at by the girl's mother who yelled that the girl had disabilities. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 and that she'd make Kuyan take responsibility for the girl's entire life if anything happened to the girl in the future. As for wow. the man himself, when a reporter interviewed him, he answered, all I wanted to hear was thanks from the girl's family. Despite the hospital and Ku Yan's fa uh, company avoiding responsibility and the girl's parents unwilling to help, thanks to reporter efforts, his case was publicized and the community collectively raised the money for his medical fees. A bittersweet ending to the case. And the girl and her family was murdered. <laughs> when the case finally <laughs> became known on wider Chinese social media earlier this month, Chinese netizens discussed the legalities of the case. As the incident was within work hours and in the work area, it should have legally been counted as a work injury, with the company providing compensation for fees for yeah. fees for recovery. Yeah, workers' comp. Yeah. Uh, the company also had no right to fire Kuyan, as he had no counts of wrongdoing. So they must provide compensation for his work injury related firing as well. So it sounds mm -hmm. like there is an upside to the social credit score. <laughs> <laughs> my social credit points are about to expire use them <laughs> finally ku had the right uh, had the right under civil law to ask the girl's family for compensation money but all the armchair analysis in the world won't help ku fully recover serving as a as a peak at one of the more rotten mindsets under under the hood of china's collectivist image so there you go don't save don't save uh, suicide victims. Don't save the mentally handicapped from jumping. In other news, Tokyo sees a 20% increase in syphilis cases, <laughs> remarkably more from women in their 20s. Wow. If the what declining birth expression? rate of <laughs> Yeah, right. Like it's if the like declining oh if the declining birth rate of Japan wasn't enough, the nation is dealing with another kind of problem with sexually transmitted diseases. And oh, I'm so good at reading. <laughs> if the de declining birth rate of Japan wasn't enough, the nation is dealing with another kind of problem with sexually transmitted diseases. And Tokyo has been hit the worst with a 20% increase in reported syphilis cases and remarkably more from women in their 20s. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government held a liaison conference to discuss infectious diseases where it was reported that the number of reports of syphilis in Tokyo was about 20% higher than the previous year. More specifically, the number of syphilis reports in Tokyo was 1,297 as of May 11th. The increase of women in their 20s infected by the sexually transmitted disease was said to be remarkable. And the metropolitan government plans to continue conducting free and anonymous tests throughout the year and help women with events such as Ladies' Day <laughs> to strengthen their inspection system. 
half off on your STD test. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> In any case, people looking to mess around with Tokyo, Toyoko kids and others in the area will likely be thinking twice before jumping into love hotels. Huh. Yeah. You know. So we, we did ladies. cover those we did cover those guys who were going around to all the brothels in Japan and infecting the prostitutes with AIDS. Oh. I wonder if I wonder if some of them managed to get away with only their syphilis. <laughs> Also, I thought this was kind of funny. Kabukicho prostitutes standing like Pokemon trainers. <laughs> like in Pokemon when you walk in front and like the little like exclamation point pops up over the head and they walk towards you. So it says here, a recent video showing the current state of the, prosti of the prostitute laden streets of Kabukicho has gone viral, with commenters criticizing the Japanese government while comparing the scene of sex workers standing around to the Pokemon trainers often seen standing around in the video games waiting for the other trainers to battle. The video in question was uploaded for the following, uh, with the following message, quote, prostitutes on the site of Okubo Clinic. The girls are from out of town. Since they can't pay for tuition, they must sell their bodies. Sounds like a salacious light novel. <laughs> this is a. <laughs> yeah, this is also a political <laughs> responsibility. <laughs> Rather than spending money abroad, they should be helping them out. Damn, called out Ukraine. <laughs> Japanese internet denizens also commented, "Quote: They're working from morning to evening. It's quite scary. There are always men wandering around and negotiating too. Cheap whores can't." <laughs> Can't pay full price for pussy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I can't pay a thousand. No, I can pay five hundred on a good day. They're lined up <laughs> properly, Corona style. Oh yeah, six feet apart. <laughs> what the hell? They're about, <laughs> they're about to start some Pokemon battles. Do they not fear venereal diseases? Can you, can, are, can you imagine they fight? Uh, they they go into the to the love hotel and they play Pokemon music as they're banging because it's a battle. Use his hand job. It's super effective. <laughs> money shot. Use money shot. <laughs> it's hard. It wasn't very effective. <laughs> <laughs> That's even better. We <laughs> <laughs> used hydro pump. <laughs> you're you're about to pay the 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 escort. Use run now so to escape to not pay for it. <laughs> you escape. <laughs> you burn. It, it just. <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing it says when the Pokemon jumps out of the Pokeball? <laughs> uh, it's just like the Pokemon wasn't caught. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to finally learn what it's like to lose to the Pokemon trainers and you have to give them money. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the Focus Center. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we we couldn't <laughs> heal your Pokemon. Penis, <laughs> penis chew now. Yeah, we have to operate. <laughs> anyway, so they said uh, I heard a bro. Good. Penis ma. Penis ma. I heard a bro say that they were all underage. Japan of today, they're like vending machines. <laughs> that was the Jesus. last story. Yeah, I bet some people who didn't know any better who are waiting around for friends or checking the map on their phones in that area are often mistaken as prostitutes, too. Oh, I thought that was going to go different <laughs> way. I thought it was going to be like, I bet some people accidentally have sex with them, he said, hoping no one would notice his history of credit card receipts. <laughs> <laughs> are they doing it for a host? I'm pretty sure some of them are just there for work and not to pay tuition. Oh, okay. So they say not everybody is doing it to, for the noble cause of paying tuition. Oh no, I yeah, don't believe for, that. 
For Poco Chin <laughs> battles. <laughs> some of them aren't going to college. They want to go to college parties, but not college. Some of them are doing it just so they can buy a Switch. Yep. Yeah. Why don't they just work at shops for that? I feel like they're going to make more money on FC2. Because they want to be, because they want to make the money easier without fucking busting their ass. I wonder. I wonder if there's an OnlyFans in Japan that auto censors your vagina. <laughs> yeah, they, they probably. If they ever have OnlyFans in Japan, that's the condition. You cannot show. The, the, um... the, the, the OnlyFans in Japan. Like, OnlyFans in Japan accessed with a VPN gets around the mosaic. Right? No, yeah. no, they actually don't show anything, any genitals. It's all just like softcore stuff. Yeah, you have a Japanese OnlyFans account? Is that sounds like no. a cool title for like a movie or something. <laughs> OnlyFans in Japan. <laughs> Tom Green's sequel to the Midnight P Monkey Hour or whatever. <laughs> yeah, he goes to Japan. These hot ladies, these hosts, these hosts in these clubs dressed as bunnies. I'm going to ask them why they don't go to America and do this. They can start by not purchasing expensive clothes. <laughs> <laughs> They're just prostitutes looking to have fun. All right, well, there you go. There's that article. Moving on. All right. Man shoplifts skirt, returns to store wearing skirt, and gets arrested. A love Jeez. story. Yeah, one of the yeah. worst <laughs> criminals ever, right? Am I right? Like he a fifty three. He was arrested for indecent exposure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought you, he was going to get arrested for, for shoplifting, but damn, dude. He, a 53-year-old man that was arrested on May 4th for shoplifting a skirt from a clothing store that he was going to use for cross to cross-dress and getting arrested later on the same day for returning to the scene of the crime. The unemployed man entered a clothing store at a large commercial facility in Sapporo around 9 a.m., where he put a skirt in his bag and left the store without paying. The man in charge of the facility checked the surveillance camera and confirmed that the man had stolen the skirt. For unknown reasons, the man returned to the store later that day at around 4.50 p.m. while wearing the same skirt he had stolen in the morning. The store employees called the police and the man was promptly arrested. In response to the police questions, the man claimed, I wanted to wear women's clothing but had no money. So I stole them. <laughs> Bro, there's wants and there's needs. You've described <laughs> it wrong. If you had no money and you still did it, it's not I wanted to wear women's clothing but had no money. It's I needed to wear women's clothing but had no money. <laughs> All right. That's true. That is true. Also, naked man arrested at restroom. Quote, I wanted to take photos of girls peeing. Jesus. And playing the switch, apparently. So a 22-year-old naked man. I'm oh, sorry, wait. Yeah, naked man arrested. Okay, hold on. <laughs> a 22-year-old naked man was arrested for breaking into a woman's restroom at the Chayagasaka station of the Nagoya Municipal Subway after getting caught trying to take photos of girls peeing. Do you think he was, like, at what point did the clothes start to come off? Like um, why did before this he entered? I think they were off before he even entered. But do you think like, he... you think he just he just got so aroused he just hulked out of them? Like, <laughs> do you think he was fully nude or do you think it was like pasty instead? So that way he couldn't get arrested. Uh, I, I think he was fully nude. I think I think, okay. I think he was full masked. I think he was he was ready to bust. <laughs> 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 the incident so occurred at the. <laughs> Good. So basically, it was like a Family Guy episode where where Quagmire was hiding in the bathroom for Lois. Yes. Uh, the damn. incident occurred at the subway station restroom after 6 p.m. on May 20th. The fully naked man admitted to the allegations and stated, quote, I wanted to take photographs of girls when they're peeing. As his... Needed, bro, need <laughs> As his re reason for committing the crime. A woman in the restroom saw the degenerate using a smartphone from one of the stalls. After realizing he had he had been seen, the man hid in a separate stall in the women's restroom, then dashed to the men's restroom where he had hidden his clothing. 
Mm. Well, this guy is he's something, man. That solves the question of the miss the missing clothing. So I, I just gotta know, like, what's a more gross fetish? Wanting to watch the girls pee or taking the clothes off and like sneaking around outside the men's room and then into the women's room? Like which one of those is more egregious? I don't is know. It, I'm is it the exhibitionism or the like the urine fetish? I, I don't know. I, I guess we would have to ask uh DC Douglas about that, you know. <laughs> uh because he did that in air well, he wasn't naked, right? But right. you know, he, I, I he got probably was going to. <laughs> so while the suspect was in the men's restroom, the woman took the opportunity to tell the station attendant who reported it to the police, and the suspect was immediately arrested. Well, there you go. Naked man arrested for wanting to see girls pee. Needing. Man, needing. Needing. Pardon me. <laughs> man gets life for bludgeoning neighbor to death with bag of Pokemon cards. What? Yeah. How like is just, that It's everything possible? we need. Murder, collecting, podcast. Like, it was made for the podcast here, right? <laughs> so... Uh, a UK man from Sheffield has been jailed for life for bludgeoning his neighbor to death using a bag full of Pokemon cards. 31-year-old Andrew Haig attacked his neighbor Simon Wilkinson outside of his apartment on August 2nd, 2022. Haig suffered from a psychotic disorder, likely schizophrenia, which was said to have been exacerbated by his cannabis use during the attack. According to the court records, Haig had argued with a number of neighbors before provoking Wilkinson into a fight, telling him to, quote, come out here and fight like a man, before proceeding to beat him with a bag containing four or five tins of Pokemon cards. Get out mm. here and fight like a man. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> he just laps him with a purse full of Pokemon cards. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. As he says that, he okay, so man. it wasn't the Pokemon cards, though. It was, it the, was tins. the tin. Yeah. That's a little different. Like, tins, tins full. So, like, yeah, I was just thinking, are they just bundles of rubber band? Pokemon? So it's a but happy yeah, ending. They're, they're, if they're tins chock full, solid full of Pokemon cards. Yeah, I can. It could have been. It it's could have been tins of panties. <laughs> like, it <laughs> no, wouldn't have just... fucking mattered. It was the tins that fucking did it. You guys it. remember um, yeah. Malcolm in the Middle, the episode where Dewey was fighting bullies, but he put a purse. He had a purse full with a brick in it, and he just beat the shit out of him with it. <laughs> I can understand something like that, but it's like the Pokemon card. Yeah, it had to be tin. Well, yeah. See, and the great, the great happy ending of the tin is that the Pokemon cards probably came out of the ordeal unscathed. <laughs> like, <laughs> wouldn't it be funny trying to sell this like hey by the way yeah, you know, these Pokemon cards these are rare cards yeah. Yeah, there's a little yeah. bit yeah, of rust on the tin that's not rust that'll wipe right off <laughs> <laughs> but it's like but these cards are rare because it was used a murder case what they're famous they're horrified famous. They're they're they'll, probably live, they'll probably live the rest of their life in evidence storage Horrified neighbors witnessed the attack and described seeing Haig repeatedly swinging the bag, quote, like a cricketer, when punching and stomping, oh, then punching and stomping on the victim before finishing his assault using a bat or plank of wood. What do you mean cricketer? He basically means like a ba like a baseball. It wasn't even the finishing move. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, it was a bat that did him in. Yeah, the bat killed him. When questioned by the police, Haig claimed that he felt bad for inflicting serious injury to his neighbor, so he tried to end his life. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, oh, I'm sorry. he didn't succeed. Oh, I'm that... sorry, you're in pain. Let me just finish you off. Yeah, no, 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 I thought you're... he was saying that he tried to kill himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I just like, I was like, well, I'm sorry you didn't succeed, and now we have to have this conversation. <laughs> like, <laughs> the judge noted that Haig's mental illnesses uh, likely did not affect his ability to understand his actions and that it was likely his cannabis use that influenced his judgment <laughs> at the time of the killing. Damn, dude. <laughs> so I want to share with you probably probably an, an untrue yet funniest thing we'll ever cover on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck? The article is titled... <laughs> This is why you should never wear a metal butt plug in an MRI machine. Jeez. Oh, my God. 
Oh, so uh I'd like to I'd like to just read it straight from the tweet. <laughs> Oh my god. Because nothing <laughs> says it better than the <laughs> than the alleged <laughs> Oh Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh crikey, mate. This is the greatest personal injury case I've ever heard. Chris Goodnow, an es- an estimated very esteemed Valley attorney, has picked up a client who is suing a sex toy company. Said <laughs> client purchased a butt plug that was advertised as 100% silicone. Client then wears the butt plug to an MRI appointment. Much to the client's dismay, the <laughs> butt plug is in fact, the, the butt plug in fact has a metallic core. The butt plug is accelerated at the speed of sound up into the client's chest cavity. Oh, described yikes. in memo as an anal rail gun. <laughs> <laughs> The client Ooh. survived with major injuries. Ooh. Right. I wish this was made up because if this was real. <laughs> God. If you told me that like chat GPT drew or uh, um, Dolly drew this, I don't mean. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's really up there. <laughs> That's oh, incredible. Man. That would be something like just to end me now, please. Yeah, this guy, he's got two current lawsuits, one against the sex toy manufacturer and the other one against the MRI tech for not turning it off in shorter than a fraction of a second. <laughs> so basically, if this is real, this guy is going to be a very rich man, probably. Possibly. Good luck. Mm. Good luck actually getting the... <laughs> so they said... Uh, He's not gonna, I don't think he'll survive to, to get anything. Like, that right. fucked him up. Yeah, dude. good luck. This guy's not set for life. He's, he's set for a world of pain. <laughs> While a horrifying (laughs) cautionary tale about the dangers of mixing metal butt plugs and MRI machines, there are, of course, reasons to be skeptical. Given how similar it sounds to urban legend formats and the fact that the scan image first appeared a month ago on Reddit before being deleted. Ah. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it is still a terrible idea to wear a metallic butt plug into an MRI appointment. So yeah, this this is an extremely loud video. I'm gonna just skip ahead to the good stuff. Turn it on, bitch. <laughs> this is really slow. Oh, they're they're like releasing it on the cable, like closer and closer, and it's like pulling it in. Or what? What are you afraid of? Oh, it's showing the. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Jeez. What is that? Thirteen hundred pounds of pressure. Hmm. Are these pounds or ki- pounds? Yeah. Oh man. That, Imagine that was a fucking bullet. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> that was a fucking bullet shot straight through the guy's anus. Hypothetical. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Look at the reading. Jesus. 1700. First of all, like hypothetically speaking, right? If that's your kink, that's your kink, as long as I don't know about that, right? Uh, why would you, knowing you have a doctor's appointment, have that? Why the fuck would anybody, like, yeah, I'm going to put that fucking there and go see my doctor for this shit? <sighs> wow. No sense. So it says here that MRI machines work by creating powerful magnetic fields and radio waves targeting hydrogen nuclei in water. As protons are subjected to the magnetic field about a thousand times stronger than a fridge magnet, their their axes line up. This uniform alignment creates a magnetic vector oriented along the axis of the MRI scanner, 
when additional energy in the form of a radio wave is added to the magnetic field, the magnetic vector is deflected. The radio the radio wave frequency that causes the hydrogen nuclei to resonate is dependent on the element sought. Uh, okay, sought hydrogen in this case and the strength of the magnetic field. Wow. So when the radio frequency source is switched off, the magnetic vector returns to its resting state, and this causes a signal, also radio, to be emitted. This is the signal which is used to create the MRI images. While this is great for seeing inside the body, especially cartilage and muscle, which other scanning methods can't image as effectively, it's not so great if you happen to be wearing metal inside or outside your... Ah, there's a link! Man dies after taking loaded concealed gun into MRI scan. <laughs> Which wait, so is it's this basically uh, the same article? <laughs> so this is so we can say this is a bullshit story, right? I don't know. I, it's I like, like to believe it's true. Because <laughs> one version, one version is the butt plug, the other one's the gun. It's like, wait a minute. IFL science. I fucking love science. <laughs> rotten me with science. <laughs> I know you're blinding me with science. All right. Anyway, so there you go. There's our uh, there's our show for this week. Sorry, it's been a train wreck. <laughs> who would have known? Yeah, who would have known? Wait, is that ifl.com or dot org? Dot com. Ooh. Anyway, anybody have anything you want to say before we uh, wrap up? Hmm. Yeah, this has been Not a really. very unique show. Happy Victoria uh, yeah. Day. Uh, yes. Make sure you sign the petition. It's very important. <laughs> uh, queer consider, icon collector cons out. <laughs> consider uh, joining his Patreon so he can pay off his bill. Yes. And also, uh, seems like an appropriate one given some of the things we talked about tonight.